Welcome back to episode 174 of the Hockey Cards Gong Show podcast. My name is Josh. I'm here at Troy. Hey, Troy. <laughs> I'm back. How is it, man? You're back. It's going After well. missing a couple of shows. Glad to see that you're doing well. We're going to learn yep. about your adventure here in, in a second. Well, actually, let's just get right into it. So where were you? Jolly old England. Went over to London with the fam. It's a trip that's been delayed, we'll say, three years, four years, maybe. We were going to go, and then COVID happened, and then we kind of weren't ready to go back when travel opened up. Then we were going to go last year, and my wife tore MCL and ACL skiing like the weekend before we were going to book everything, and now we finally got to go. So 10 days in London. We did a lot of stuff. It was awesome. Great city. Can't wait to go back. What were your like, top three things? Uh, I liked... London Tower. We actually went to a couple plays in the West End that were really good. We saw the Back to the Future musical and then the play that goes wrong, which is absolutely my favorite play I've ever seen. It's just hilarious. Is that and the one then, you saw in New York? Yeah, I saw think? it in New York. And then we saw it okay. in because me and my daughter saw it in New York. And now we all went in the West End. And it was just as funny the second time. And third thing we'll go with, I think Westminster Abbey was pretty cool yeah that's a crazy but it looks like like batman's lair or something like that yeah it's it? it's so nuts. gothic and yeah well we missed you i missed you <laughs> uh, i had to do everything and it's fine you know we're all allowed to go on vacations here I, I did learn though that my computer sucks i hate it and i want it to die <laughs> especially so you don't know this but everyone that particularly watches on youtube knows that the youtube videos have been delayed yeah. And the reason the last couple of shows is my computer stinks. So without getting too technical, we record the episode, we download it into a program, add the intro, fix a couple of things, and then export the video. My computer did not want to do that at all. <laughs> last show with Jeremy Lee was like almost three hours long. Yeah. And it took about five hours to get the lowest quality video exported <laughs> so we could post something on YouTube. So Definitely happy to have you back from that perspective. At some point, Troy, I was thinking today, it'd be nice to get like a real production facility and like have like a real editor and real equipment <laughs> to do the show. So if there's any billion dollar sponsor out there that <laughs> loves hockey cards and uh, loves the hockey cards gong show, hit us up because uh, that yeah. would be great. I was so Jeremy and I finished this is again behind the curtain kind of thing. We finished recording probably 11.30 p.m. on Wednesday night, and our show goes live at 3 a.m. our time, Central Eastern, you know, Central time on Thursday. And it took to get the video to export till 2.30. So from 11.30 to 2.30, because my computer just kept freezing. I may have said, this is a family show. I won't repeat what I was <laughs> saying at, in the middle of the night. I was looking up forums, trying to do everything. It was a whole thing. But but that's what you got to do, Troy, when you uh, you know want to yep. be a podcaster. Yeah, got to get the job done. So happy to have you back, and uh, excited for today's show. Before we get started, just a quick reminder: the Hockey Cards Gong Show podcast is a Patreon podcast. That means we rely on supportive listeners like yourself to help us cover our show expenses, produce more, and hopefully better hockey card content. A better YouTube today with Troy back—that's for sure. <laughs> and help us fund initiatives, even in a small way, to grow the hockey card hobby. It's very easy to support us. We partner with Patreon for that. You can join our 199 support level tier. You also get access to our Gong Show Discord. Big contributions to the show today, especially to Who's Hot and the Struggle Bus from the crew over in Discord and love chatting with people every day there. To support us, there's a link in the show description if you're listening to us on a podcast app or in YouTube as well. In TikTok and our Instagram profiles, there's a link. You go to our website, HockeyCardsGongShow.com, and click on the Become a Patron link at the top of the page. And then finally, you can just go to Patreon's website directly, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com, and search for Hockey Cards Gong Show, and then can see all of the options there. All right, man. Are you rusty? You, uh, you ready for the game? <laughs> play? you nervous, Troy? Are you scared? No, not nervous, but we got to play catch up. So we begin yeah. today's show by catching up on the almost greatest NHL player to wear each number segment i'm gonna tackle 72 73 and 74 i will make it quick i'm gonna fly through these because i don't want to spend 40 minutes talking about the almost greatest player to wear each number then it's off to who's hot in the struggle bus followed by hobby news 
actually take a look at if a player can be a hobby goat without winning a cup. Some good discussion coming up there. Then it's off to new product releases, and we end the show with our gong show mailbag and any personal pickups. Okay, Josh, like I said, it's time to play catch up. I was out the last two episodes, so we need to do a three for one, I guess, on this segment. You can get 72, 73, and 74. Again, I will try to go quick, give my little preamble. Previously, we looked at the greatest NHL player that wore each number that matched our episode number. We ran through all those numbers, so now we are looking at the almost greatest NHL player to wear each number in the runners-up list in the Hockey Writers' Greatest NHL Player to Wear Each Number article. Josh, the almost greatest player to wear number 72 per the Hockey Writers' Greatest NHL Player to Wear Each Number article and selected by me is Patrick Hornquist. Got a nice picture of him holding the cup here. Yeah. There were no other runners-up at 72, as a reminder, the greatest to wear number 72 was our boy, Officer Bob, Sergei Bobrovsky. All right. Patrick Hornquist, forward from, oh boy, Solentuna, Sweden. I'm going to go with. I'm probably saying it right, but I love that it has tuna in the name. But he's Did from, you play hockey there? I did not play. I don't think I played oh, there. Wow. It's weird. I don't think I played there. Stockholm. I was I was in Stockholm. Oh, okay. Those suburbs. Okay. All right, Hornquist was the 260th, 260th overall selection in the 2005 NHL entry draft by the Nashville Predators. More on that in a bit. Hornquist. Yeah, how many rounds are there? I, oh, now, yeah, now, now you're, you're, you're jumping ahead. You're going to love it. Okay. You're going to love it. You, your mind went to the right spot. I will say that, though. Oh, no, I lost my, lost my place. Hornquist played in 900 and rusty. And, <laughs> rusty. 901 regular season NHL games over a 15 season NHL career. Hornquist began his career with six seasons with the Nashville Predators. He then played six seasons with the Pittsburgh Penguins. He ended his career with three seasons with the Florida Panthers. For his awards and accomplishments, Josh, he's a two time Stanley Cup champion, 2016 and 17 with the Pittsburgh Penguins. For his career, 264 goals, 279 assists for 543 career points. Hornquist made the playoffs in 11 of his 15 NHL seasons, compiling 28 goals, 25 assists for 53 points in 106 NHL playoff games played. Best season of his NHL career from a point standpoint was his 2013-14 season. Hornquist had 22 goals, 31 assists for 53 points in 76 games played with the Nashville Predators. Did also you flip they, that photo? Did I do what? Oh, what? Look no, the number. he, I know he wore 27 with Nashville when he started out. Oh. Yeah, see, you always get these weird things with this segment sometimes. And now when we get into these almost guys, it's like, I yeah. think the hockey writer's article had to stretch it a little bit, a little bit here. But he, he wore 72 at Pittsburgh, one cup. So I guess that's why he's the almost greatest. Okay. All right. Hornquist was a consistent point producer and a battler in front of the net. Over the course of his 15-season NHL career, he had 30 or more points 11 times, throwing two cups, and that is a pretty good career for a guy that is honestly not a not a superstar player, but was mm -hmm. just a very good, consistent NHL player for 15 seasons. So couldn't couldn't unseat Officer Bob, but that's okay. He's the almost greatest to wear number 72. Hornquist retired from the NHL on July 5th, 2023. Josh, he is currently a scout, or he's currently a scouting and development consultant in the hockey operations department of the Florida Panthers. He looks old. He, does, he looks like he retired. Just said, "Oh, now, now I'm going to get old here real quick." But no, mm -hmm. fifteen. You play fifteen years. I mean, what's he got to be? 30, yeah. 36, 30 some, probably something in there. Mm -hmm. Happens. Age catches up to all of us. All right, his fun, interesting facts. Josh was right on the ball thinking about that 260 overall pick. He was the last player selected in the 2005 NHL draft. What do they call it, Mr. Irrelevant? In the, in well, the in NFL football draft. they do. Yeah. Yeah, I was just wondering if there's a name for that in the NHL. I didn't see it. They probably mm -hmm. just call him Mr. Irrelevant, I guess. But he was not irrelevant. He almost became the greatest player to win number 72. Tied for 12th all-time for goals by a Swedish-born player in nhl history that's impressive i very think very impressive 
And here you go, Josh. On December 4th, 2018, Hornquist scored three goals in two minutes, 40, 47 seconds against the Colorado Avalanche. His hat trick was the fastest hat trick in Penguins history. Mario so Lemieux didn't do that, Troy. No, either did Yager, either did Crosby. So there you yeah. go. Hornquist now, in our show notes, in Horn, Hornquist. I can't say. I, I on the O or, yeah, whatever it is. It's got the two little dots above the. Did you do that on purpose or? No, I copied it. I, when I always do it the first time, I usually copy it and paste mm. it because I want to make sure I get it, the spelling right at least once. And then I'll try to just. Remember. What is that called again? Is that an umlaut? Is that what that's called? I think so, but it's, okay. I'm probably wrong. Scandinavian. They use it in Scandinavian languages. Mm-hmm. Okay. His rookie card, Josh. 2008 09 upper deck young guns number 227 see a picture on screen if you're watching on youtube psa 10 has a pop of 23 the gem rate of 70 percent last sale was on march 2nd of 2024 on ebay verified and therapy for 48 us dollars so have at it my least favorite young guns design yeah this one it's, yeah, like we always talk about the. It looks like the iron gate of a fence or something, mm-hmm. and it just it's a weird weird design. But okay, that was seventy two. We're gonna move on. Okay. We're gonna keep plugging away, Josh. We gotta get to number seventy three. Not gonna read the preamble, but the almost greatest NHL player to wear number seventy three, Josh. If you're watching on YouTube, is this guy? We should know him, Tyler Toffoli. Oh yeah, hey, hi Tyler. There, there you go. Hey, he's still he's still playing. There were no other runners up at 73. As a reminder, the greatest story, number 73, and this is interesting, was Michael Ryder. I remember that one. It was really weird. And let's be honest, Toffoli is probably going to be the greatest player to wear number 73 yeah. when the hockey writers decide to get around to updating the list. They, they kind of say they take periodic looks at it, but Toffoli is going to end up being the greatest to wear number 73. Is Michael Ryder, is that? Hasselhoff's name and Knight Rider. <laughs> we we talked Michael about Sun- that the last time. Too. I know. Michael Knight, wasn't it? Michael Knight. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, think Close. What, I think that's what we came up with. We're, we're just yeah. showing our age, but we're losing cred if we're wrong. Okay. Tyler Tavoli. He's overview center from Scarborough, Ontario. Tavoli was the 47th overall selection in the 2010. NHL entry draft by the Los Angeles Kings. Defoli has played in 804 regular season NHL games as of the time I did my research yep. over a current 12 season NHL career. Defoli began his career with a little over seven seasons with the LA Kings. After that, Defoli has been kind of a journeyman and has been traded four times in the last five seasons. After Los Angeles, Defoli has had stints with Vancouver, Montreal, Calgary. New Jersey, and now the Winnipeg Jets. He seems like he's one of these guys that is a better player than, uh, how do I want to say this? Than how many teams he's played for. Does that does that make sense to you? I like, see what you're he, saying. like he doesn't seem to stick around anywhere super yep. long, but he also seems like an asset to a team too. The thing is, he's becoming, um, he's producing more points the older he gets, which is, Pretty mm. amazing because he's he's getting up there. I mean, this is he's like okay. trade bait. Like that's yeah, like he's is, definitely, is that his nickname. I'm gonna fast forward into yeah, nicknames. Definitely trade bait. All right, for his awards and compliments, Josh, one time Stanley Cup winner, 2014 with the Kings. For his career, 257 goals, 259 assists for 516 points. As again, when I did the research, Tafoli has made the playoffs in seven of his previous 11 NHL seasons. We're not counting this year compiling 18 goals, 26 assists for 44 points in 88 NHL playoff games played. Best season of his NHL career from a point standpoint was his 2022-23 season, where Toffoli had 34 goals, 39 assists for 73 points in 82 games played with the Flames. Toffoli is known for his quick and accurate shot, above average speed, and good hockey sense. Boy, isn't that a generic scouting mm. profile right there but that's i just made i had to make these quick because we can't we can't dwell on these guys too long or we'll be here forever to foley is still playing in the nhl josh here he is this is a recent photo he's currently on the winnipeg jets after being traded by the devils to winnipeg on march 8th of this year on the current nhl season to has 30 goals 20 assists 
for 50 points in 71 games played. And I would like to say that if you look at his NHL.com bio, I found an error in there. You did? (laughs) I did. They talk about his stats with New Jersey up until the trade. And they said he had like, I want to say it was like whatever points in 40 some games played. And I'm like, that can't be right. I'm like, no way. He, he played way more than 40 games this year with the Devils. So mm-hmm. there's something going on there. But I, uh, I was, we need to call for an investigation. Well, I was going to be like, or? should I email them and be that guy? But I was like, I'll just let it go. Just try, write a strongly worded letter. <laughs> strongly yeah. worded, strongly worded letter. They would love that. I'm sure the NHL would really take my, yeah. take my advice. But anyways, so he's still playing NHL, got traded. He's producing. He's got 50 points in 71 games played. For his fun and interesting facts, Josh, to fully became the first player in NHL history to score a hat trick in an outdoor game when the LA Kings defeated the Colorado Avalanche 3-1 to in the, check this out, 2020 Navy Federal Credit Union NHL Stadium Series at Falcon Stadium, <laughs> U.S. Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, Colorado. There Remember when we used to like just say like the Vikings playing the Bears at Soldier Field, like stuff like that. And, <laughs> and now it's like, you know, it's time for the Tostitos halftime <laughs> show of the U.S. Bank yep. third series from the midfield line sponsored by Speedway. Well, now you know, they like, like oh oh, I, when they do the corporate sponsorships, they might they'll rename the whatever it is, the rank, but they'll call the sheet of ice something else. And it's just ridiculous. They do it. I think they do that more in baseball though. Or, or I mean, I get the football. money aspect to it and yeah. it's hard to stay away, but I kind of miss the like dedication of an arena to no. like soldier field, right. It's a great example yeah. to in honor of us military, right. Yeah. Or like her Brooks arena or something like that would yeah. be kind of cool. Exactly. Second fun fact for our boy Toffoli in the 2014 15 season, Toffoli played a majority of the season with Jeff Carter and Tanner Pearson on a line dubbed that 70s line because all three wore numbers in the 70s. I'm going to give, I think California Dave put that in our Discord at one point. I can't remember. Yeah. I feel like he he did. So I'm going to give him credit for for that one. Did you see that the bobbleheads were speaking to California Dave? were discovered in Ontario, California. <laughs> <negotiated>. <laughs> not, I'm not saying, <laughs> but I'm saying. I did I did see they found them, and mm. they were found by a recovery specialist organization. Yeah. What, so yeah, I wonder what, what the that? ransom. That's the rant. They paid a ransom is what I think happened. Okay. I, sorry, I got to ask you one like really yeah. quick London question. Was yes. there any reference to hockey that you saw of anything other than on your phone? No. The entire time you were there. Nope. And I will say this. We did not. I mean, we were constantly on the move from sure. 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. And we'd get back to our an Airbnb and it was literally veg out. And we didn't have BBC or any of that. We had whatever. Mm-hmm. They had Samsung Live TV or something. So we didn't watch much news. And the only news they had was CNN. So I didn't mean hockey was never on. It did was you on have a lot phone. of like fan interruptions where did you have to go? I'm sorry. I'm at dinner with my family. I like, I'm happy to take one picture with you, <laughs> no. but that's all I can do is any of that. No, nope, none of that. No one, no one recognized nothing. I, I mean, I didn't see so a couple of guys wearing like New York Rangers stuff, but it was like few and far okay. between. All right. All right. That's about it. All right. Tyler. Whoa. What's this? If you're watching on YouTube, you just saw a sweet Google page. All right. Rookie card, 2013-14, number 246, Tyler Toffoli, Young Guns. PSA 10 pop is 204, the gem rate of 76%. Last sale, last sale, Josh, March 24th of this year. Honey Bay, verified in Terapeak for 24 U.S. dollars. Whoa. (laughs) Go get them while you can, I guess. If you get that for 24 bucks and he has like a, these, have they are they still in the playoff race? I haven't even I can't remember. Winnipeg? But, I don't well, know. That's why they got them because they were yeah, they're one of the hottest teams. And yeah, I'm just having a brain fart here. But that's super cheap. That's not even grading costs. And no. we go from and Patrick Hornquist 
one of my least favorite young guns desi- designs to one of my favorites. I really like the 2013 for sure. Yeah, Winnipeg's definitely in, in the playoff yeah. hunt. I knew it. I just you know you have those crisis of confidence moments <laughs> when every, I have that every day. <laughs> okay, we got one more people. Stay with me. We're on number 74. The almost greatest thing. This is this is amazing how this worked out because there's just a big milestone for this guy that we'll get to. The almost I'm greatest. Just... I, yeah, the almost greatest player, almost greatest NHL player to wear number seventy four, per the hockey writers nominee or whatever. I can't even say it anymore. John Carlson. There we go. Here he is. Great picture. Even got the seventy four on. He he's worn that his whole career. Mm-hmm. There were no other runner ups at seventy four. As a reminder, the greatest tour number 70 war was TJ Oshie. Interesting. Do you think there's some controversy there? Because Oshie hasn't been good, I feel like, in uh, maybe I hasn't been good as a little strong. Hasn't been super good in a while, hmm. right? Yeah. And it, what's the most notable thing about TJ Oshie is his Olympic shootout, right? I mean, is that's kind of all okay, I'm not dogging him. Yeah, plus well, Oshie's a four two where yeah. Carlson's D. I'm just and wondering if there maybe like could be a debate there. There could probably could be. They're pretty close on points, which is pretty crazy. I didn't realize that. Uh Oshi has oh before I I won't say Carlson's, we'll get to it, but Oshi has 692 career points. And looks like Yeah, I'm even more confident now there could be a debate, but okay, keep going. Okay. All right, so our boy, John Carlson. Defenseman from Natick. Natick, N-A-T-I-C-K, Natick, Massachusetts. Carlson was the 27th overall pick in the 2008 NHL entry draft by the Washington Capitals. Josh, Carlson has played in 1,000 regular season NHL games. Over a current 15th season NHL career, he played in his 1,000th regular season game yesterday, I believe. Wow. Yep. Did they have like a ceremony? A party they better party. have. <laughs> I haven't even looked if they did. I I just wrote a note to myself because I did the research. I was actually in London and I was like 999 games. And I'm like, I gotta look if he's playing tonight or whatever. And sure they were. So I knew he didn't get a thousand. And when the, when that game is on the road, do you think they wait? They wait to do the ceremony until the next home game, I assume, right? I would yeah, assume so. Yeah. Okay. And he also scored this, so that's fun too. Oh wow. All right, Carlson has played his Entire 15 season NHL career at the Washington Capitals. Lots of awards and accomplishments for him compared to the other two. One time Stanley Cup champion in 2018 with the Caps, 2011 NHL All Rookie Team, first one time NHL first All Star Team selection, one time NHL second All Star Team selection, two time NHL All Star Game selection. On his career, 149 goals, 519 assists for 668 points. Carlson has made the playoffs in 12 of his previous 14 NHL seasons, compiling 19 goals, 54 assists for 73 points in 123 NHL playoff games played. So he's basically got 25 less points than TJ Oshie. Right? Yes, Something like that. Great. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yep. And they've played, Oshie's played, I think, 1,005 games when I looked it up real quick. So they're wow, been, they had to spend a lot on silver sticks in the past uh, week. So <laughs> there you go. I wonder if, how that budget's doing for the. Yeah, no kidding. Capitals. Best season of his NHL career from a point standpoint was his 2019-20 season where Carlson had 15 goals, 60 assists for 75 points in 69 games played with the Caps. He was also the runner-up for the Norris Trophy that season, losing out to Roman Yossi. Carlson is a strong two-way defenseman who has been a key player and backbone for the Washington Capitals the past 15 seasons. He also has exceptional mobility in the defensive zone for his size being six foot three, 218 pounds, big bruiser back there, fantastic player, offensive defenseman, all our all our things we love to hear about with our D's. Carlson still playing the NHL, Josh. Caps. Yep. Obviously, I said that. On the current NHL season, he has eight goals, 38 assists for 46 points and 73 games played. If you're watching on YouTube, that is after he scored on in his 1000th game. So that's always fun. Mm-hmm. For his fun, interesting facts, his nickname, Josh, Jumbo or Jumbo Jet. No, okay, cool. that's a nickname that's very cool if you're a guy. <laughs> probably don't want if you're a girl. <laughs> true. Very yeah. true. The other two didn't even have nicknames, so they're, this, at least this one got a nickname. How do you? That's impossible. You can't be a hockey player and not have a nickname. 
If it's not hockey reference, they don't have a nickname. <laughs> okay. okay. I believe you. All right. Carlson became the first Capitals defenseman and 11th U.S. born defenseman to reach 600 NHL points in a 5 1 win against the Tampa Bay Lightning on November 11th, 2022. And our final fun fact for him he was the 2019 NHL All Star Skills Competition hardest shot winner at 102.8 miles per hour. Got a rocket. All right. Rookie card 2009 10. Gun Guns, number 497. If you're watching on YouTube, it's on the screen. PSA 10 pop is 29 with a gem rate of 31%. Last sale was on February 1st of this year on eBay and verified in therapy for 154 US dollars. We were just talking right before we started recording about I was updating you on our little road to infinity yep. kind of progress. And we'll, we're not going to spoil it. We'll get to it in a second. But when you see like a guy like Carlson, who has a PSA 10 pop count of 29, <laughs> just, it's hard to process what's yep. going on with uh, our boy Betsy. But like, yep. we'll get to that to that in a second. Uh, so are you tired? Do you need a nap? That was a lot, Troy. Man, I'm uh, mouse dry. I will say there was about an hour before we started recording where I was on the couch. And I'm like, I'm going to fall asleep. I'm going to fall asleep. I just because literally I just landed and you came and got us from the airport. You know, would we land three hours ago? And it was just like, oh, I got. I, well, I'm this is going to be like a thirty-hour day. Like literally, like, <laughs> today is thirty hours for you, right? Because you gained six hours coming home. Oh yeah, it's it's crazy. Like we were, and you had to get to the airport early, and then we didn't even realize this. Thank God for technology, because London or whatever the UK had daylight savings time today, today. Sunday, Sunday when we're recording. Thank God my phone updated the time, or else we'd have been we wouldn't have been late because I am a one of those people that wants to get to the airport like as six early weeks as possible. Early. Yeah, <laughs> and my wife and kids hate it, but I'm like, well, what if something goes wrong? What if the tube crashes or something like that? And I just, we got to get there. But yeah, it's it, it'll be a long day. What kind of amazes me about it being daylight savings today in the UK is what we had daylight savings a month ago or so, or two three weeks, something like that. Yeah. So you not only do you decide to participate in daylight savings or not, you get to choose whenever the day is too. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Holy cow. All right. We're gonna move on to week 25 of who's hot and the struggle bus. It's where we look at players who are, you know, ripping it up, filling up the score sheet. And okay, so when you were across the pond, did you check on any games or anything like that? Or did you, did you just take a total mental break from... I kind of just checked out. I, would, I mean, I would see stuff come through because Google obviously knows everything about you. And all my news feed is hockey scores and hockey yeah. games. And I did see the Wild tried to... Went to the well again and tried to pull the goalie in overtime and it didn't work this time. It's over. Just pull the yeah. plug on this point yeah. on the season. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to look at who's hot and who's on the struggle bus. We always start with who's hot. And the first guy that I picked this week, Troy, H. Thompson. Good. He's on pretty much been team. A, yeah, pretty much been a season to forget for Tage. Yeah. For his team, Buffalo fans, Thompson collectors, and I'm sure Thompson investors as well. Which is why I was pleasantly surprised to see he's had a pretty good past couple of weeks. So I had to put him up on who's hot. In his last six games played, six goals, four assists for 10 points. I think he had a four-goal game against the Devils, somewhere in there, too. That brings, Troy, his 2023-24 season total to 26 goals, 23 assists for 49 points in 63 games played. A definitive step back from last year, where he had his hobby moment as well. When he pumped in 47 goals, added 47 assists for 94 points in 78 games played. So when I when I he played well enough to put him on who's hot, mm -hmm. the first thing that came to mind is like, well, what's happened this year? What's wrong with this guy? First of all, he's missed some time, 11 games total. Nine of those were due to a broken hand in November, and then he it, they did mention that he returned wearing a brace. And I, I always wonder in these in, instances, and I think we kind of learned like last year with Austin Matthews and you're, you're more of a, obviously you coach, you're more, you have more of a playing history than I do. 
I would think that, okay, you break your hand, you're able to come back in 11 games, but that's a tough injury for a goal scorer, I would assume. And so who knows how long it took him to get right. Is that yeah, plus, resonating with you? Yeah, I mean, just, and I don't know what, which hand was it? Did you know which one hand it was? No. Is, it the is there a difference like, between the top? Well, and yeah, hand? like the torque on, on one of the hands is going to be greater, but then... Obviously, the other team also knows that you're coming back, and they probably know you're wearing a brace, and guess what they're going to target? They're going to go right at it every time. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I found in my research and reading a bunch of articles is that he feels still pretty confident that he's been playing decent, and it seems like a, a, one of the reasons for the drop in production is he just isn't shooting nearly as much this mm -hmm. year. And that's one of the things that the coaches have been kind of on him about. So I don't know if that's a confidence thing or, you know, how how you think of a guy like Ovi, who's I don't think you're ever going to have to convince a guy like that to shoot. Right. <laughs> yeah. And Tage is kind too, of, I was going to say, Tage is too old to send to the world juniors. Like, our, who is it? Was it? Who's our one? Yeah, cousins, was it JJ? Right? Or was it Cousins? Or yeah, yeah. I thought it was JJP, but yeah, you're right. Or got to send them to the juniors and tell them to shoot the stinking puck and then bring that to the NHL. One of the things that I thought was interesting, too, is Thompson referenced when talking about his struggles that he's sort of used to dealing with adversity. Having, he's really had a, a big time up and down career. He's had some really big moments and good moments and then times when he struggled. And so he feels like at this point he can power through that. And then, of course, it's not just him, but the whole Buffalo team has been a disappointment this season. Uh, when I checked yesterday, there were 34 or 35, 34, and five, four spots out of the last wild card spot in the Eastern Conference. So it looks like they'll be golfing early again this spring. And then I think, Trey, when you think about Thompson from the hockey hobby point of view, it puts us back in this question of how consistent of an offensive producer can and will he be? When you watch him play, he's got like superstar written all over him. I mean, he's so huge and he's fast yeah. and skilled. He's like, it surprises me when he struggles to the degree that he does. And I think, I don't know how to articulate maybe this the best, but that the league needs stars like him, like these big monsters and, that are just so impressive to watch. And so I, I, I kind of root a guy like Thompson and I hope that he's able to not only come back to form but have you know as he's in sort of the meat of his career now run off five six kind of monster seasons and be very consistent and be a, st a star in Buffalo that flirts with 30 goal or 50 goals a season I think that would just be awesome for the NHL and, and for the hobby too I was just gonna say is this where you want to take your victory lap because I remember when you were we had a, we had a segment on who we thought wouldn't produce as or maybe it was a mailbag question, and you said Tage Thompson would would not produce what he did last year, and mm. you got a couple uh, messages yeah. <laughs> to you, but hey, I think you're right on this. Those one. are always yeah. tough because I I almost hate doing those predictions because yeah. I, I don't necessarily root for anybody to not succeed unless you're playing the Wild. <laughs> in a meaningful game, which never happens anyways. So well, uh, that this, yeah, I'm this bitter about guy, it. Now, yeah, this was a guy, though, I remember it because I'm looking at it right now because I remember you talking about it where you went and looked at the pedigree again. And he has never been a huge goal scorer. If you go back and look at all his stats from every league he's played in, it wasn't until he, about when he got to 2021-22 season with the Sabres did he really go off as a goal scorer. And that was one of the things that always kind of worries us when we see these guys. And obviously mm -hmm. he had a fantastic year last year and it's kind of fell back a little bit, but like you said, I mean, he is, he's huge. We've, you've seen him live. I haven't seen him live, but I've watched on TV where he's just a big dude. He's fast. He's skilled. And he has all the, the, the physical tools to be a stud. I boiled it down to two things in my mind. Either a, he is just, like Austin Matthews last year, he's been hurt more this year mm -hmm. than he's powering through it, but he just hasn't been able to be at his peak self, yeah. which is very possible. Who knows? These guys are, we never tell you otherwise, right? 
or there's something going on upstairs because going back and again, referencing what you just said, he's so impressive physically and the eye test is so impressive that it's, it's hard to think that he struggles from a physical standpoint. It has to be, whether it be a confidence thing or a will thing or focus thing, whatever it might be. And then and all great athletes need to have that consistency yeah. is such a huge part of that. So I actually would love to know more about from people that watch him play every day. If there's any Buffalo fans that are out there watching or listening, uh, go ahead and message us and yeah. let us know what your thoughts are, because that's when you really kind of get to understand yeah. some of these guys better is when you not just when you see him occasionally like we do. Paige Thompson is 2017-18 Young Guns. PSA 10 popped 509, just a 28% gem rate. Very low. Mm -hmm. That's over 118 US dollars on March 30th. It is up 39% in the past couple of weeks mm -hmm. and about the same over the past couple of months. In January 2023, Troy, this peaked at 610. I'm having I'm having Caprice off flashbacks right now. <laughs> And we'll get to that. I know. I just, I, right. I said that. I was like, oh, that's coming up even. All right. So, Tage Thompson, nice to see him playing well. First guy who's hot. You got the second guy. I do. I'm going to bring him up here right now. Philippe Forsberg, Josh. Oh, this is, again, a guy we don't talk about a lot. He's producing. So, let's talk about him. I think Have we he, ever I, talked about him? I tried, I think we've talked about him once very briefly, like okay. as a teammate or something in, in, in a segment, but like I saw we're talking name. about this guy, this guy, this guy, Philippe was there. Yeah. 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 And we, we've talked about his mustache. I know that. And I saw his name kind of pop up on my radar when I like the stats. Cause I, what I always do when I do this segment, I start by looking at the past two weeks. That's what I do. I go to quad hockey. Yep. It's very easy to search for past two weeks. And but I also, so his name popped up there, but I have to give a shout out to our, one of our Patreon members and discord member 86 collectibles. He also called this out in our discord about Forsberg's hot street. So I'm going to give him a little bit of shout out too, for that. And while I started my search on the first two weeks, then I was like, I started looking at his stats and his, his game log. And I'm like, huh, he's actually been actually pretty good the whole month of March. So for the month of March, the 29-year-old center from Ostervala, Sweden. I did not you play, play there. hockey there. Okay. <laughs> I did not play there. So far has 12 goals, 10 assists for 22 points in 12 games played. I think they played wow. last night. I did not update my numbers. I did this yesterday before they played. On the 23-24 NHL season, Forsberg is only one measly goal away. And you might have, I don't know if you got it yesterday, from tying his career high in goals. And one point from tying his career high in points. Currently has 41 goals, 42 assists for 83 points in 72 games played as of when I did my research. Forsberg has been a huge reason why the Panthers have went 9-1-2 and two so far in the month of March. Obviously, he's been on fire. Panthers are on fire. Or not Panthers. Predators. Predators. Hey, everybody. You did you hear the whole like thing about their win streak? And maybe what started it? It was probably Ryan O'Reilly, right? No. Oh. So they had a trip. They had a, a game on a road trip that was planned in Vegas. And they had a, a team outing was organized for them to see you 2 at the Sphere. By Ryan O'Reilly? Might have been Ryan O'Reilly. I don't know. <laughs> We're just going to say it was. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sure. By Ryan O'Reilly. <laughs> and for a number of games before that, they played like dog crap. They were awful, and the team canceled the outing. They said, really? "No, you have no. You're not playing good enough. We're not going to see you two at the sphere." <laughs> wow! And ever since then, they've gone on this huge win streak. The other That's Forsberg nice. thing I have to ask you, because and this is like floating in the nether region of my mind here, was there something with him in the wild, like two, three, four, or five years ago, where the Wild were maybe thinking about going after him or something? I just feel like there oh. was. Well, see, Fiala, right? Didn't Fiala come from – where did we get Fiala yeah. from? Was he from Nashville? I think so. And then Granlin went to Nashville? Yeah, I can never remember all the stuff okay. that we – I was trying to find it real, real quick. I'm trying to look at wild rumors of Fleet Forsberg. It looks like there's a couple things. Yeah. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. there's some rumors out there that he might, but it feels like he's like one of these guys that's been really good for a while, but yet nobody ever thinks or talks about. Him. Yeah, kind of like <laughs> kind of like your boy, uh, Cooch, uh, Cooch, Kucherov. So anyway, yeah. So obviously, Fleet Forsberg for the Predators, not the Panthers, as I incorrectly wrote in my notes. I don't know why I did that. Fantastic month of March. It lands him on the Who's Hot list. Our boy Forsberg. He's a 2013. This doesn't even look like him. This can't. It's not even the same guy. Look at this. Him compared to that. <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, so Forsberg's a 2013 Young Guns PSA 10 pop of 171. Gem rate of 73%. There was a sale on March 22nd of this year via eBay and verified in Terapeak for $147.73 US. Now, when I did the research, that sale seems a bit high as the previous three sales to that one in February and March were around 75 to 99 US dollars. Again, I know he's on a hot streak and... I don't know. Like, just take that one with a grain of salt. That was somebody one got excited. Would, yeah, somebody someone got either excited. got really excited or someone's trying to do something out there. And and I just noticed I didn't even like put what Fiala or not Fiala. Oh, I'm all over the place. Forsberg's career stats. Hold on, I gotta look him up because I want to. We gotta get more context around around our boys. So for on on his career, Josh, 280 goals, 350 assists. 595 points in 690 games. Mm-hmm. There we go. I'm going to take a second and dust off another seat on the struggle bus, Troy. For yeah, oh. I, it's it's granted. I mean, you're I know. You've, you're in like the longest day ever. You've just <laughs> flown internationally. You've got Harry Potter on the mind, so we're yeah. going to give you a pass. But uh, we'll, we'll try to. I'll, I'll carry you. I got you. I wonder how many teams I've already screwed up on this <laughs> show, saying the wrong teams, wrong n- names. I can. Well, that's always a struggle, but whatever. When you're tired, it's hard not to like get like all mushy brain and mushy mouth. <laughs> Very hard. Do you feel like on I'm feeling Jeremy on the speed dial just in case? I like we talked to him, we got to laugh. I was when you picked me up, I was like, what if I just I'm sitting there and just fall asleep right on camera? <laughs> uh, well, if we had a button bar, I'd wake you up. Okay, <laughs> we do. It's right here. Look. Yeah, it's not. Poison. I said set it up. Yeah. For our last guy who's hot this week, Troy. I got jealous when you went to Discord and Patreon, so I had to go too. And I'm going to shout out Mick, who had an awesome su- suggestion. Suggestion. Oh, geez. Here I go too. <laughs> <laughs> Nominating Evan Bouchard, who over the past two weeks, the 24 year old defenseman, Troy, leads all NHL defensemen in scoring. So eat that, other yeah, defensemen. Go. He's got one goal, 11 assists for 12 points in seven games played. On the season now, Bouchard has 16 goals, 60 assists for 76 points in 72 games played. It is by far a career season for the fourth-year NHLer. Prior to this season, his best year was 2021-22 when he had 12 goals, 31 assists, which is 43 points in 81 games played. Interestingly, this past August, the Oilers signed Bouchard to a two-year $7.8 million contract Total, so that's an average annual value of three point nine million. So here you got a guy seventy six points and with ten games left, and they're paying him three point nine million no. a year, and he's twenty four years old. That's a good deal. I would take that in a in a heartbeat. And they got to be pretty excited there in Edmonton mm-hmm. about about Bouchard, who is tied or is currently tied. Tiedly, is currently tied with Roman mm-hmm. Yossi for the third most points in the league for a defenseman with his seventy six points. Kale McCarr is two more, 78, and then Quinn Hughes leads all defensemen with 81. Bouchard is one of only six defensemen this season that's played more than 65 games, who's averaged a point per game or better. Mm. Pretty big he, guy, just like John Carlson, who we were talking about. So he's 6'3", yeah. 200 pounds or something like that. He was the 10th overall pick in the 2018 NHL draft, made his debut that season, but then wouldn't return as a full-time NHLer until 2020. 21. So that's why I kind of counted him. Uh, he's 24. Yeah. God, I feel like this guy, I feel like he's been around for 15 years. <laughs> he looks like he's got like, he's got like a man look. Yeah. Like, like a 40 year old dude vibe. Grizzled so. veteran look right there. Yeah. 
He's part of Edmonton's top defensive pairing with Matthias Ekholm. Also plays on Edmonton's first power play unit, which is like being blessed by the hockey gods. Let's just admit it. I mean, yeah. Don't you think? It's like if there's any power play unit you'd want to be on, there, there's no one more better than that, right? Yeah, I wonder how many of his assists are to <laughs> McDavid or to well, not McDavid guys. this year. But. That's true. McDavid's this McDavid's the assist machine this year. Yeah, McDavid's got a crazy amount of assists. Evan Bouchard is a 2018-19 Young Guns PSA 10 pop 438. 54% generate less over 80 US on March 23rd. It is down 26% in the past two weeks. Don't know why. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> why wouldn't it be? <laughs> why wouldn't it be? But still up 28% in the last two months. So the hobby is schizophrenic when it comes to Evan mm-hmm. Bouchard. All right, Troy, there it is. The struggle bus pulled up, squeaky brakes. Air brakes let out. Yep. You've got the first guy on the struggle bus this week, and shocking, it's a goalie. It's a goalie. I, I decided I wanted to look at goalies besides myself and put myself on the struggle bus, I guess, for this episode. But Josh, I went with this guy, Tristan Jari. So, I and am I saying that right? Is it Jari? I, I think it's Jari. It I didn't yeah. look it up, so people can tell me I'm wrong. But first of all, how cool is this? If you're watching on YouTube, look at this helmet. That is a perfect struggle bus goal. And helmet's awesome. Look at that. Tom, Jerry. I love that. Oh, Tom and Jerry. Oh, yeah. It's got Jerry. The It must be Jari, Jerry. Yeah. It's or a little bit of a stretch, name. Tristan. <laughs> or I'm saying his name wrong, but I didn't look up my NHL pronunciation, well, guys. It's also a perfect picture because the puck is going in the net. Yeah. Puck's going in the net. So we're, he's struggling. I think he's struggling, but... This is where I this is where I actually want Pittsburgh people to reach out to me too. Like I did that with uh who's it, Jake McCaff? Who is it? Ah, uh, it was with the Boston guy. I can't remember his name now. Where it's like I, I Yeah, there it was Jake DeBrusk. And we actually got a lot of good feedback on it. And, and if he was struggling when I brought him up, because it felt like me was, but again, I don't watch Boston a lot. But so our boy Tristan, for the month of March, he has two wins, six losses, with two overtime losses. With a 4.44 goals against and a 0.87 save percentage with no shutouts in 10 games played. Is that good? And not very good. Okay. But let's, I mean, I, I, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, <laughs> let's, let's just, let's give Pittsburgh a little bit of credit there. Or the, the team in front of him hasn't helped yeah. him that much. And I believe Pittsburgh might be almost mathematically eliminated from the playoffs. But again, I brought up Jar or, Tristan. I'm going to say Tristan because I just love that name. I don't think you can say either right now, but just <laughs> I, I know. either one probably works. Correct. And, but he didn't help him very much in the month of March. And so in those 10 games played for the month of March for our boy, he's allowed less than three goals only twice. You're not going to win like, a lot of hockey games if you do that. No. <laughs> you you got you to gotta get three goals or less a majority of the time. And again, like I said, the Penguins haven't been the best team in front of him. On the season, he's got a 2.9 goals against average with a .903 save percentage. Six shutouts and 50 games played this season. And actually, if you read a lot of stuff about him and you you look at something, he's actually played good this season, even though the stats are a little, little high. But again, for what the team was doing in front of him, He's actually had some pretty good stretches of playing well. But again, this month of March is just kind of the wheels have fallen off for him. Well, it's and like every it's, goalie. It's just yep. so rocky. The yep. I would love to have a just ridiculous season by a goalie. And maybe we didn't appreciate last year enough with the Boston tandem of Swayman and Linus Allmark. Yeah. But, but like a Dominic Pashik, like dominator type season where the story is you just can't beat this guy. It just, that just doesn't exist anymore. Right. Correct. And Josh, while you were talking, I looked up the NHL pronunciation guide. J A I R dash E E. Is that Jerry? Jerry? J A I R. That doesn't even help me. Pronunciation guy doesn't even help me. So whatever. It means we're hopeless. Just, like, everybody knows. That's part of your time, oh, right? We can't hopeless. say any words. This is the most popular podcast in the world where they say no words right. 
<laughs> Correct. All right. 2016 Young Guns. PSA 10 pop of 235. Gem rate of 66%. There was a sale on March 14th of this year via eBay. Verified in Terra Peak for 48 US dollars. Which is about the same amount this card was selling for in October at the start of the NHL season. So there we go. Okay. Tristan Jari, whatever it <laughs> something, is, something really. on the struggle bus. In addition, Troy, we have you, Kristen Jari, your hiccups, <laughs> and Andrei Svechnikov joining on the struggle bus. The 24 year old Hurricanes forward, just three assists in his last 10 games played. That means no goals. Mm-hmm. Giving him 17 goals, 29 assists for 46 points in 53 games this year. It is the second straight year where he's missed significant games. He tore his ACL on the tail end of last year. Yep. Recovery bled into this season as well. Missed some games with an oblique injury too. On the plus side, though, apparently he's like a huge workout warrior. Keeps his body in amazing shape. The past couple of years, the Hurricanes do a, a pretty big and competitive fitness competition at the beginning of the year, and he's been the winner which is notable because there's guys like Brent Burns who mm-hmm. are kind of known to be workout warriors or Jordan Stahl, people like that. So, yeah, it seems like, again, he's that's a significant injury, as we know, coming back from an ACL tear. So he wasn't able to pick up right where he left off, especially last year. And who knows, maybe it'll be a case of everything coming together in the playoffs for him. Team has already clinched a playoff spot, considered to be widely, I think, by a lot, a cup contender. Still 24 years old, so pretty young, too. He is kind of nearing that fork in the road, though, when I was thinking about him and being 24, because my frame of reference on Svechnikov over the past couple of years is how about how young he is? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, he's got 30 goals and he's only 21 years old. Because that's it's going to raise a lot of eyebrows. Now he gets to like 24, and I think he just turned 24 a few days ago. But it's like, I think people, it's more about, are you a 35, 40 goal scorer at this point? And so for him to have a sustained hobby chase, I think next year is going to be a pretty big season for him. Unless he totally goes off in the playoffs this year, which we could see a little bit of a spike as well. I don't know. Have you been a, a Svechnikov guy? I don't know. It's just, he's like a goalie. He's just up and down and always disappoints me when I get excited about him. Mm-hmm. Is that your dad talking about you or are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, don't kidding. I'm talking about myself today. <laughs> yeah, no. Andrei Svechnikov is 2018 Young Guns, PSA 10, pop 1,150, 69% gem rate, last sold for 78 US dollars on March 30th. It's about flat over the past couple yeah. weeks. So there we go. All right. We're done. Who's hot in the struggle bus? Again, who's hot this week was Tage Thompson, ENT, Philip Forsberg, and then Evan Bouchard, and then our show, Tristan Jari, and Andrea <laughs> Special There you the go. Bus. There we go. Troy, you got to make a quick mention for Gong Show partner and sponsor Slab Sharks. Super grateful to them for their support of our show. Well, time stop, 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 stop. Did you see the website update? They updated yeah. some stuff. You see the sharks in the background? I love it. <laughs> Well, they got like the kind of like the swirly eBay things around yeah. the McDavid Future Watch Auto. So Karn nice was right. Pressure. He's Karn the was saying they're doing updates. They're doing updates. Here we go. Well, Troy, you should go check out the website because the current Slab Sharks weekly eBay auction is live. And if you go to slabsharks.com, you can get a link to the auction, check out all, all the amazing hockey cards and play some bids. Yesterday, I took a look at the auction, and of course, it's another banger. Lots of great yeah. cards. So here's just a few of the ones that stood out to me. So another second week in a row, 2324 Upper Deck Hunter Bedard, population count 10 raw. It's a big card out of 10. It made me think of a question because there's there's a, a million Connor Bedard cards again, like we expect with Slab Sharks. Right next to this card in close in bid amount, Troy, there was a Young Guns exclusives out of a hundred. So it made me think, you have to answer this. What is the better long-term hold? A population count 10 or a Young Guns exclusives out of 100? Exclusives. You think so? I just, the cachet of the Young Guns. Yeah. Okay. I don't even know how to answer that. I, <laughs> I, I, I get your logic, but 
yeah, I guess it, it's tough to say because the whole pop counts are still so new. Moving on, though. Here's a pretty cool 2007-8 SP Authentic Patrick Kane Future Watch Auto out of 999 PSA 10. I really like the 2007 yeah. Future Watch Auto design. Yeah. It's a really nice looking card. A little bit of a scribbly autograph, but also kind of cool, too. Yeah, it's kind of cool. There's just one little part where the pen might have came up, but man, that looks pretty good. I have another question. The big thing for Patrick Kane, right, is that you come Showtime, Stanley Cup champion, but a lot of people would refer to him as the greatest U.S. born player. Is Austin Matthews taking that mantle already? Do you think? I don't know, Matt. Matt, at least Kane's won cups. At least, what about Madonna? Is Madonna in that conversation? Oh, well, he was until he went to Dallas. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we don't like Dallas, anymore. so I, you know, Matthews is right up there, but. Kane's definitely. I'm going to say hard. Matthews. Matthews takes has taken the mantle. Yeah, he just got to 60 goals. I don't know if you yeah. saw that. Okay, Trey, are you feeling nostalgic yet for the French variation parallel? Because there's a Yurad mm-hmm. Slavkovsky Young Guns French PSA 10. I kind of miss it. I'll be honest. I'm curious to see what these French do in like five years. Yeah. Because to me, I I just I it wasn't my thing. I have no love or anything and it's like well, i haven't we missed know it. french is not your thing <laughs> and i well it's like i haven't missed these cards one bit but i i know there's probably some people that do and i'm curious what these what the trend price trend of these french young guns well, are, i think are they'll now. end up being like a tribute card so yeah. we'll see the connor bedard hmm. young guns french yeah. tribute in extended series or or it'll be like a clear cut tribute auto or something like would that. Would that be would that be the card that you want added to SP Authentic? Would that help SP Authentic? Right? Because yours, then, you always... then is it, it's still like too many young guns parallels. And as and I, it's I a tribute. Kind of miss, we gotta get rid of tributes yeah. too. I do kind of miss the French, but I will say the Alper Silver is like a trillion times better. Yeah, that's what replaced okay. it. So it's a good move. But still though, kind of a cool card and does make mm-hmm. you feel a little tiny bit. Of early nostalgia for French. Next one I found, Troy. You can never go wrong with a no. Mario Lemieux patch auto. Like this 2017-18 Splendor Borderless Red out of 11. I don't know what that's a... Uh, I was just going to... Is that... Oh, what is that? that? Like a practice jersey, do you think, or something like that? No. I wonder if it's the tag. Is it the tag? Did they do tags? Oh, maybe. Back then? Yeah, it could be a tag. It's some sort of memorabilia. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful auto, though. Yeah. The Oli Lefsa is yep. very, very clear. Again, <laughs> look at Lemieux's auto, and you tell me it doesn't look more like Oli Lefsa mm-hmm. than Mario Lemieux. Okay, and then the last one, Troy, I got to admit, I, I'm I'm not like this hugest fan of clear-cut cards, but this one, it's from 2019-20, UD clear-cut. It's a acetate reproduction of the 1990 Upper Deck Patrick Waugh, like base card, but it has an auto. And I really, really like this one. I like it, but man, this gets in that whole discussion again. How many times can we go the well of doing old cards? But I guess it's a new take on an old card. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It just, I, I do like it. I mean, it, it's an, I like the card. I like, I actually like clear cuts probably a little bit more than you. And I mm-hmm. like that this is autoed. And I've always liked Waugh's okay. auto. It's kind of, you do? I was just going to say, I don't like it. So we're well, I was in... say I like it from the spa- from the fact that Patrick Waugh is just kind of out there and kind of crazy at yeah. times, and I feel this auto fits him kind of perfectly. Yeah. Part yeah. of it's really nice, and then part of it's just crazy. It's not a pretty auto. There's like no, no. flow to it, but yeah, I'm I'm a pretty auto connoisseur. So, <laughs> well, those are just a few of the goodies. Check out all the rest, of course, at the newly updated SlabSharks.com. And if you happen to be a Canadian hockey cards collector and are looking for an easy way to sell your cards while getting tons of other collectors looking at your listings, we'd recommend checking out Slab Sharks for their eBay consignment services. They make it easy and hassle-free to sell your cards via eBay. Slab Sharks basically does all the work from taking awesome photos, completing all the listings, answering buyer questions, hunting down payment, shipping your cards to winners, auction winners in both the U.S. and Canada, and then try most importantly handling any post-sale issues. Your cards will get listed, and they're very popular and always getting bigger and bigger. Weekly eBay auctions. 
So head to SlapSharks.com for complete consignment information, including payout rates, and to start consigning your cards with them today. Happy news! Happy news. Okay. Road to Infinity update. <laughs> I'm going to tell the, the what I just... The first thing I said to you when we got on before we hit the record button was I did the Road to Infinity update yesterday. And I'm thinking I'm safe. It's Saturday. Is PSA even open on Sunday? Sunday's Easter. Oh, by the way, happy belated Easter to anyone that celebrates. Yeah. And so it's got to be the number, right? It's safe to at least Monday. No. Went up huge between Saturday and I, Sunday. I'm almost like taken aback. I just looked it up. Like I pulled out the PSA 10 poppy board because I didn't look at your notes, but yeah. Wow. Yeah, holy fork and shirt balls, Troy. There you go. Good place. I love it. Do we have another doozy? So since our last update on Thursday, which was four whole days ago, well, three, yeah, yeah, four whole days ago, and still less than a month since being released, the Connor Bedard base (laughs) Young Guns PSA 10 population count, Troy, now sits at 700. 162, <laughs> which is an increase of 357 PSA 10 gem mints in the past four days. But that's sinking. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Who is it? We were just talking about with the PSA 10 pop count of 20. It was John Carlson, right? Mm-hmm. 29. 1,645 have been graded to this point, giving the card an updated gem rate of 46%. The gem rate's been dropping a little bit. So it started in the mid 50s, and every update we do, it's been dropping a few. I think 48% was the gem rate on our last show. So they made sure when those cards were coming off the line, someone was sitting there kind of bending the corner at 50% of them, every other. Make sure that's not 170, 80% gem rate. So I'm full of questions today. I got another one for you. If right now I put the over under, at June fifteenth of this year, so twenty twenty four, for the PSA ten pop count of this card to reach five thousand, are you betting the over or under? Man, I'm going under, but bare, I'm I'm not going to go over. I'm, I'm going to say under, but I think it hits four at least. Because I think I'm betting the under too. When okay, so what's you the cheapest? Remember, sur- you, you, I, I, wait, yeah, I was, I was just to say, what's the cheapest PSA service? Is it the turnaround? That's my point. Is, it- is that these all have to be expressed? Okay. How many cards have been yeah, sent sitting in there in like the whatever the three month yeah. kind of window thing where? Yeah, I think it's gonna be close. Now again, it's so it's really well. So any other general? I mean, we we say all the time that nothing with Bedard surprises us. Does this surprise <laughs> you at all? Is it? I know this actually doesn't. I mean, maybe maybe the increase in like the four days, but it's. No, this is what we thought. Now, if it gets to like six, seven thousand <laughs> by June, then I'll be surprised. But okay, so again, keep this in mind because we're about to transition here. <laughs> seven hundred and sixty-two PSA tens. It came out March six, right? So that's twenty-five days. Seven hundred sixty-two. Yeah. Well, Troy, very, very excited. <laughs> here we go. Get a huge milestone. Well, while you're away, I'm surprised you were even willing to travel when <laughs> this went down. I'm going to be super careful with my words here. I know this is going to be a very emotional story for you. Our guy, Dollar Dollar Bill Kirill Troy, his base Young Guns PSA 10 pop count has now eclipsed 5,000 copies, nice. sitting at 5,018. <laughs> do we need wow. to pause? Do you need a minute to collect yourself? No, what I'm what good. Do do here? I should... Uh... Here, you, you keep talking. I'm going to find something real quick. It's a huge deal for you and probably half the rest of the hobby that has a copy of this card. <laughs> you like you can prepare a speech or something if you want. I'll, I'll just blabber for a minute. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe at a special button bar program for this moment. But So what, what did you, uh, Josh, it's actually went up even more. Are what you looking you at our it? ladder? Yeah. Uh, they have 5,032. PSA is 5,018. They have 5,037 now. Oh, it went <laughs> up from this morning. <laughs> okay, so 5,037. I kind of feel like you represent this card in a way, Troy, because 
I call you a one percenter. <laughs> and then you're in the top one percent of I people am. that paid the most ever for this card. Yeah. It, it's crazy to again conceptualize how much this card has been graded. And you're like, so what? Five thousand. <laughs> yeah, there's your value chart. <laughs> Here you go. This is okay. Is that an Olympic ski run or is that a here we go? So I'll zoom in for our YouTube. Have you identified exactly when you bought this card? Yeah, no kidding. Hold on, I gotta do something here. Are you the yellow dot? (laughs) Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, okay, while you're finding that, Troy. This card has been graded by PSA 7,518 times. The, I'm just using the data I had. I know it's a little bit more. The, the 5,018 PSA 10s give it a gem rate about 67%, which is a pretty high gem rate. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I should mention too, right? It's the highest graded... Or, or Wait, no. it's the This is the most PSA 10s for any Young Guns ever. Wow. Now, it's not the most gem mint Young Guns. The... Connor McDavid, BGS 9.5. There's a couple thousand more. It also points out, though, Troy, like how important gem rate is. Because actually, and I think it might have been last mailbag or it's on this one. I can't remember. Somebody asked us, they said, well, I don't, why is gem rate so important? Well, I'm going to give you a good indication or kind of a, I guess, context around that. So again, this card is a 67% gem rate. There's been 7,500 that have been mm-hmm. graded. Cole Caulfield's 2021-22 Young Guns PSA 10. Pop is 3,152. So that's like 2,000 less than this Mm -hmm. card. But there's been 9,410 of those graded. Right? It's a 33% gem rate. So almost 2,000 more Caulfields have been graded, and there's almost 2,000 less PSA 10s. So that's why that's why when we look at cards and values and like Jack Hughes is another one where it's like I'm always like, oh, I love this card, but that generally mm-hmm. scares me because if people get really excited about it and start shipping them all into PSA with that yeah. high gem rate, the probability that the pop count raises rapidly is much more for a card like the Cap- the Caprice up Young Guns PSA 10 versus like the coffee. It's also the second highest pop count of any card again only behind the mcdavid young guns bgs 9.5 which has 7756 graded copies so now <laughs> yeah. to me this is like of course we think caprice off is a great player and it's kind of funny that you paid 750 bucks for it or whatever you paid 802 i think it was it was just oh, it was on that chart oh just, so we can go back and look at it but the reason why this is a 5,000 pop count is to it's circumstantial, I think, in time frame. Yeah. And that high gem rate. Yeah. So he's a good player. It was the right time. This is like when the the peak of the sports card market was exploding and yeah, he Lassie was, wasn't playing so well. Kaprizov yeah. was playing awesome and everybody was going nuts over him. Yep. Do you know what the gem rate was when you bought the, or not the gem rate, the pop count was when you bought this? It had to be. It, like, I, uh, I don't, I don't. I know. I mean, obviously, it was a lot lower, but I could probably figure it out. But all right, we're gonna move on. So, congratulations for what <laughs> I don't know, but uh, this is your card. I've actually never owned a copy of this card, graded or raw. I don't know if you I ever want, you want. You want to buy one? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a deal. I paid eight hundred. I'll give you a deal for six hundred. <laughs> all right, talk about our voice more. Here we go. Yeah, Bedsy. Got to get back to Bedsy. There's a little bit of a maybe controversy, questions, concerns, kerfuffle. confusion, kerfuffle. kerfuffle, kerfuffle on the interwebs about this card, which is a 2023-24 Upper Deck Employee Exclusives Connor Bedard Rookie Auto with an on-card gold ink auto. Mm-hmm. Seen a lot of these pop up on eBay the, the last few days. Caused a little bit of consternation with some collectors that are wondering, well, why are on-card autos? They ha- I haven't gotten the opportunity to open one in a pack of any set that's been released. Why are employees getting them? Why do employees get these cards in general, et cetera, et cetera. So I reached out to upper deck, wanted to get kind of the lowdown uh, because we know the employee exclusive cards are not new by any stretch, but I want to understand sort of what 
why they exist, what the parameters are, and kind of how employees are supposed to handle these, etc. And got some good feedback from Upper Deck. So first of all, it's important to know that any Upper Deck employee, they, they kind of are, they don't have the same hobby rights, I guess, as a lot of us do. They're yeah. not allowed, and I think for good reason, to sell any Upper Deck products on secondary market with one exception, which we'll get to in a minute. And I think it makes sense, right? Why not? You don't want them finding cards lying around the office and trying to make a quick buck and yeah. post them on eBay. And there's just a lot of kind of ethical boundaries there that shouldn't be crossed. The exception is the employee exclusive cards, which are given to them sort of like a bonus or think of it like that way, or a thank you for, you know, they work hard and Upper Deck's a private company. They have the right to do any sort of thank you appreciation that they feel right for their employees. And part of their tradition, like they make the PMG sets, they've mm -hmm. done not just hockey players like Serena Williams, Otto. Sometimes they do cards and, and autos that maybe there isn't a huge amount of hype around or chase around. And so, and then other times it might be a Michael Jordan auto mm -hmm. when, you know, cause they have the exclusive there or Connor McDavid rookie or something like that. And so very recently upper deck, gave out their employees this card, the uh, employee exclusive rookie auto. A lot of people are wondering about the, the timing too. It's like, well, why is this out before maybe like SP authentic future watch autos, other hard signed autos. It's because, well, upper deck, you know, they, they'll have Bedard sign a whole bunch of different cards at one time. And these ones don't have to go through all the packing and yeah. boxing and, be shipped to warehouses and distributors. They just hand them out to their employees. I don't know how they do it, but so yeah, it can get to the, the end user a lot quicker. So that's kind of the backstory. Do you, do you like this card? Do you think it's cool? I do. I like the gold auto. Little, the gold little auto smudge. is awesome. Yeah, a little smudgy, but it's definitely mm -hmm. a cool looking card. I I wish the blue was red, but mm -hmm. that's all you. Well, there's a price. reason why they chose this design. Yeah. We'll get to you in a second. Uh, they've been, a lot of them been showing up on eBay because they are allowed to sell these cards. This is the one exception. So this is one exception. Player. So I was, yeah. I was telling you, like, it, it would surprise me that, that they are allowed to sell these because I worked at a, in a former life at a huge retailer in the U S so people can figure it out. But at one point, this retailer had a partnership with a Italian fashion designer that was pretty big at the time. And we all got, I don't know what you want to call them, handbags. They gave every employee one of these handbags. And these, these handbags started popping up on eBay and people got fired because you were not supposed to sell <laughs> these yeah. handbags they gave us. And so it, it, that was my only like small Troy world of this. And I was like, oh, they can sell these cards. Oh man, I wish I could have sold my handbag that I got because they were worth money when they when we got those things. And I just mine ended up in a closet it's still sitting there probably. Yeah. So they're allowed to I guess do with them as they wish. And that's yep. why any of us haven't like I just bought a Caprice off employee exclusives PMG. So mm -hmm. that got into the marketplace because some employee decided to sell it. The other thing that people are taking pot shots at, which is a little bit funny but uh, it's like the condition of some of them. Like you look at this card, the lower right corner oh, yeah. is a little as whiting on it. And what I say on that is, well, at least they produce cards oh. to the same condition for themselves as they do <laughs> for, for us too. So no playing favorites. Discriminating yeah. in that, in that regard. I don't get the whole controversy over these uh, again. I, and I want to get your ideas and thoughts, but, I think Upper Deck has the right to do anything they want. They're a private company. If this is how they want to say thank you to their employees, good for them. Yeah, I mean, it, like, again, it's a private company. They can. They can do what they want. Like you said, and I think a couple of people in our Discord said this, too. It, this is kind of one of the ways they can pay bonus or give bonuses is to have these cards. Now, I think in our Discord, it was a little more... I don't know, a little more negative on how this is a bonus, like how they give bonuses via cards rather than cash or something. But it's a cheap way to do it. If it's, you think it's, about it. Yeah, it's just, it's a different take. I, I, you know, given my example of what I was coming from where I, when I worked at a that big retailer, I, I kind of see how this can be a little bit of, can get people talking. 
But once you think about it more, it's like, well, if, if the company says it's okay, then I have no problem with, with an employee selling it. I, yeah, I, I, I think I'm fine with it. I, I, I'm glad if, if they don't want it, it gets into the hands of someone that does want it. So, I mean, that, that's a good thing too. It's also another example of the whole Bedard phenomenon stirring up yeah. questions and thoughts. And these are, yeah, employees exclusive. Like not, this isn't new, right? This isn't new. Well, and speaking of that, why they chose this specific design is, and it has this has to be intentional, it's the same card design yep. as the 2015 Connor McDavid rookie auto. Which is sold for like here we're showing a BGS nine ten, yeah, it it sold for eleven thousand dollars in March of twenty twenty two. So I mean you know wow. that's not a bad bonus. Now the Bedardsies, the Bedsies, it's on around three thousand right now. So my question to you, Troy, because I'm full of questions. Mm -hmm. You work at Upper Deck. You get a Connor Bedard. Rookie Auto, Golden Auto, one of these pretty sweet looking cards. You flipping it right now on eBay for three grand, or are you socking that away? Man, that's a great question. I well, I should follow my own advice and say just take the win, right? Take the win, yeah. get my three grand. But part of me would would want to sock this puppy away because obviously I don't know what the they, these aren't numbered. I don't think, no. but I can figure out pretty quick how many employees Upper Deck has and. I don't know if everyone – see, that's another thing is I don't know how these are distributed. Did every employee get it or is it like top performers got it or how how that works? But I Maybe can... that's card condition. Maybe if like you show up <laughs> late or, yeah. or, or you, you miss like corner. your sales goals, you get like the Ben Corner. <laughs> but it, I can and... guarantee you it's a pretty low pop card. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I Yeah, I'll, t I'll take the win. I'll take the win and sell it there. I think I'm going to bank it just because it's like free money at this point, right? Mm -hmm. It was given to me for free. Yeah, right. good point. Yeah, good point. Can I, I think either is a winning strategy. Okay, Troy, because we're a glutton from punishment, we're going to move on to what is a little bit a little bit of a spicy topic. I think we actually okay. might have something to do with it, maybe, because uh, I've seen a lot of chatter about Connor McDavid, can he be a goat, not having won a, won a cup versus like Sidney Crosby out there. And we've been sort of beating around this topic a little bit of, you know, can a player be considered a hobby goat or all-timer and have lasting long-term hobby chase, hot values, Mount Rushmore type, even long into retirement if they never win a Stanley Cup? If you've listened to pre recent shows, we've asked sort of this question to Karn Rye, Jeremy Lee, I think Phil we asked, Loud Collector. <laughs> Ask Phil, he'll tell us. We got yeah. to get Phil back on. And then there's that whole spinoff McDavid versus Crosby, Crosby thing that's been going on Instagram. We even got a mailbag question about it. So given that, I wanted to actually do like a proper deep dive into this issue. See if we can sort it out between the two of us for maybe ourselves or each other. I've actually been pondering this for about a year now, chiefly in regards to McDavid. And I want to start by explaining why. So McDavid, Troy, in my opinion, is the most talented hockey player in the world, has yeah. been for a number of years. I feel that that's a generally agreed upon consensus by most fans and hobby collectors. Would you agree? Yes. His hobby values are, they really are only behind like the highest graded Gretzky and or Ricky cards. Like he's in the top three. You'd put him Gretzky and or as far as like guys that command the most value in the hobby. And maybe the most, you know, the second or third most bankable hockey player in the hobby all time. Now, if you want to throw Mr. Hockey into that debate too, or you can make an argument for Crosby and Ovi, but another topic, another show. I also want to point out too, that the whole question is broader than just McDavid. It's really about anybody, but McDavid does provide like a, a case study, call it of a, an amazing legendary player who hasn't won a cup yet. So it's kind of a concrete subject to have this discussion around. Yep. So Keep in mind, it's not like an attack on Connor McDavid because I'm actually have a very high opinion of him. It, so if you're asking yourself, like, why is McDavid a good case study? I'm going to lay out my argument. As I mentioned, he's, in my opinion, the best hockey player in the world, has been for a number of years and probably will be for a number more. 
He's in his ninth NHL season, which is a healthy amount of seasons to have played for the best player in the world to not win a chip, as the kids say. But he's also I hate, I hate that term. I'm so okay. old and jaded. I hate the word chip. Well, now if I want to bug you, I know what to do. <laughs> now I have a one championship, as as the old people say. But he's also still pretty young, Troy. And at an age, you know, he just turned 27 in January. So he's got a lot of runway in front of him, too. Okay, so I got to make a very quick aside here, too. And I, I wrote this in our notes. It was here in this whole conversation. when, And I've been thinking about this topic constantly for the past couple of days. I started writing. I was doing research. And it had a complete, like, panic attack that we had absolutely done this topic before. And so I spent like 20 minutes going through back all of our shows. Have you ever had that? Like where you're like. Yeah, but Google drives my friend. Like it it actually does a good job searching. Like I can find stuff. I got to do that better. So I don't think we've covered it before, but it was just kind of comical that I had already spent like two hours. And I'm like, (laughs) crap, have we already talked about that? But I don't think we have. And it's also a total trip when you cannot remember your own show. So uh, back to McDavid. So given that he's at this interesting intersection where he's played nine years, but he's still got a lot of years in front of him, has not won a cup. He's at this maybe kind of interesting midpoint in my mind or championship crossroads. Right. He's, he's getting closer and closer to that midpoint. It hasn't happened. And and again, too, if I had to bet today and whether he'll win a cup or not before he retires, I'm still more convinced he's going to win. So I'm not yeah. negative on the fact that he won't win a cup. I actually think he will. What about you? Would, would you bet that he would still win a cup versus the more odds are better he'll win versus yes. that he won't? Yes. I Yes, way better that he'll win a cup than won't. And I'm definitely not rooting against it. For the hobby, It's would be best if he won a cup or multiples, right? So I don't want anyone to think I'm like anti-McDavy. But, Troy, there's no guarantees in life, of course. And it's it is possible he won't. It's a team game. One person can't win a championship alone. He'll, of course, have to stay healthy and be able to perform at his peak in his later years as well. So that brings us back to the question at hand. What if what if McDavid or either a player of his ilk has an amazing career, a ridiculous career, from a personal performance and production standpoint and does not win the Stanley Cup? Can that player have a lasting legacy in the hobby that is on par with Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux, Patrick Waugh, Crosby, Ovechkin, all those other guys who won it all, and most of them multiple times. So I spent some time looking at the history of the NHL and then other sports as well. I wanted to find examples of players that are as good at their craft as Connor McDavid that never won it all, but still were, were like considered goats or hobby and goats in the sports cards world as well, too. That even if they win championship lists. So in the NHL, most people would point to Marcel Dion right out of the gate, right? He's, if you look up any sort of Google or type, who's the greatest NHL player to never win a championship? This is a great photo, by the way, too. Oh, that's awesome. I got happy when I saw this <laughs> photo. Marcel Dion Troy is sixth all time in NHL history with 1,771 career points. He's also sixth all time with 731 goals. So that's no joke. He's a one-time Art Ross Trophy winner, two-time Lady Bing winner, one-time Lester Pearson Award winner, eight-time All-Star Game participant, two-time NHL First Team All-Star. He's probably the most accomplished NHL player to never win a Stanley Cup. But other than career like point totals and goal totals, he's not as accomplished as McDavid, who's won Rocket Richards and Hart Trophies. Yeah, right? Hart Trophies, yeah. And, of, and you would certainly think that there's a good chance that if McDay, if McDavid stays on his current path, that he'll, he could surpass Dion in points and goals as well. Right. And actually finish his career higher than Dion. So if Marcel Dion is the greatest player in the NHL to never win a Stanley cup debatable, but let's just say he is, does he have a big hobby market? Not really. His 1971 OBG rookie PSA 10 so for a record high, fifteen thousand six U.S. dollars this past December, Troy. Oh, I got it. Hold on. <laughs> there you go. Kind of cool. Yeah. So, 
it's not exactly how when we have McDavid cards that have sold for over two hundred thousand, it's hard to say that Dion is in the hobby elite at fifteen thousand. And then if you go beyond him, we're not going to do like a huge deep dive into other people, but you could make an argument that Pavel Bure, Eric Lindros, Jerome McGinley, Adam Oates, Matt Sundin, Dale Howarchuk, Peter Statsny, Pierre Turgeon, Gilbert Perot were all guys that never won a cup. All the famers, legendary players, they have some sort of hobby presence, each of them, but nothing at all equatable to like Gretzky, Lemieux, wow. Gordie Howe, Ovechkin, Crosby, etc. So my conclusion, Troy, and I think it's fair to conclude that if McDavid were to never win a Stanley Cup, but he continued to play the way, the way he has and finish with an amazing career with amazing totals and be the talent that everyone appreciates, with a bullet, he would be the greatest player, NHL player ever to never win, win at all. Oh, yeah. Agreed. For sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which does not mean that he couldn't still be a hobby goat, that his rookies maybe won't sell for a million dollars someday. But what it would mean is there's no precedence in the hockey hobby for that. Yeah. Right? So it'd be breaking news. So so to say, if you're confident that even if he doesn't win, he'll still be at the most elite, is he would be the first, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good conversation because I think I kind of lean you can still be a hobby goat, but definitely you will be dragged down through the mud in any hockey greatest player discussion. Forget about the hockey card hobby. Just think about greatest player in the in hockey. You will definitely be penalized severely for not winning a cup. But I, sh- I should have found this, but there was within the last couple months, I saw it was a video. I know I saw an interview with Wayne Gretzky mm-hmm. and he was basically asked this question. Can you be, considered an all-time legendary great player and never win at all. And he said no. And then went on to explain and then caught himself because I know yeah. he's thinking of McDavid and yep. totally hedged his answer at that point. Well, there's been the, I've seen the question pop up on Instagram. Would you rather be a fourth line player in the NHL with a cup or the all-time leading scorer with no cups? And I always think, I always say, well, I'd rather be the all-time leading scorer because I'm going to have a lot more. <laughs> money for to save up for my retirement and enjoy it but it's the same kind of question it kind of falls into the same thing we're talking about here well i want to keep going so so that's like the hockey perspective now i want to do a comparison to the other sports so the next part i looked at was the nfl yeah and quarterbacks drive the football card market and so i think that's the logical place to start here's where i think that we start to see a difference and maybe how different athletes in different sports are looked at differently Mm mm-hmm in my opinion, championships are deeply tied into how quarterbacks' careers are judged. Yeah. It comes up anytime you're talking about the legacy of a quarterback, right? You don't ever hear like a GOAT type conversation about a quarterback without championships being mentioned, right? Mm-hmm. So if they say Patrick Mahomes is a GOAT, the, the thing that is, well, he's only won four or whatever. I can't remember, four, three or four Super Bowls, and Brady is seven, right? That's it always comes yeah. to that. When you're discussing in an NHL quarterback, when you look up the greatest quarterbacks to never win a Super Bowl, Dan Marino is at yep. the top of most people's list. That's sort of the the title that he's had for a long time now. So Marino is eighth all time in passing yards, seventh all time in touchdowns. And this is interesting too because he came into the league with you know very a couple years after Joe Montana, and then of course with the same year as John Elway. Right. So there's actually and Montana has four Super Bowls and LA has two. So you can do some comparisons. Yeah. There. The all time high sale for Marino card is like twenty seven thousand US dollars. I think it's like a green PMG. Montana has had a sale for one hundred fourteen thousand and Elway, who I think is the, the better comparison, fifty thousand. Right. So there's a big difference there. Now, does that mean that there's not like a decent Marino market. No, or, you know, I don't want to get too far into the weeds on football players. Um, but it is a difference, right? And you have to wonder if, why is the highest always sale double essentially what Marino is, is, is does it factor in that Elway won two championships and Marino was never able to get it done. I think it's also a good time to make the point that winning a championship doesn't guarantee 
you'll have be in the hobby elite either. You look at a guy like Peyton Manning staying with football for a second. Cards are pretty cheap given his accomplishments compared yeah. to other NFL quarterbacks. So it doesn't necessarily, what is like, uh, I can't, it, it just doesn't mean that, that you're guaranteed by winning a championship either. So in the NFL, much like the NHL, again, I can't find an example that would give us historical context for a guy of McDavid's ability and production who's on the Mount Rushmore without winning a championship. It just doesn't mm -hmm. really exist. Then I looked at the NBA, which is pretty much the same as the NFL. Again, it feels like championships are the key metric constantly brought up with players, probably more so than any sport. Like to be considered an NBA GOAT, it's always about the championships. It's the whole LeBron versus Jordan kind of thing. Jordan's got six championships. LeBron is four or whatever, right? In, in people's mind, case closed. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the greatest NBA players not to win an NBA championship, you'll find names like Reggie Miller, Steve Nash, Chris Paul, who's still playing, John Stockton, Dominique Wilkins, etc. All great players, Hall of Famers. None are in the same of these guys. Again, comparative level of excellence as McDavid is in hockey. So again, now we looked at hockey. I don't really find a kind of point of context for McDavid. I can't find one in the NFL and can't find one in basketball. But then Troy, we get to baseball. I knew this one. I knew baseball was the, the great equalizer. <laughs> yeah. And I think this is where we can maybe find some comparatives yeah. and differentiate kind of how athletes are viewed sport by sport a little bit. Because when you look at the greatest players to never win a World Series, you'll find names like Ted Williams, Ken Griffey Jr., yep. Ty Cobb, Ichiro Suzuki, Carl Yastrzemski, Tony Gwynn, our guy Harmon Killebrew, yep. Ernie Banks, and even maybe throwing Mike Trout, right, if you want to look at active players. Uh, Joe Maurer? <laughs> That's a shot. I do not think that Joe Maurer. I don't even think Joe Maurer should be in the Hall of Fame, but that's another story. He's a Minnesota twin. And here we have players like Griffey, Ted Williams, and Ty Cobb are huge hobby chasers. Yeah. Now, Ted Williams and Ty Cobb is kind of hard to compare because they played 100 years ago, like literally almost, right? And you have to factor in the whole modern versus like way vintage kind of stuff. But Griffey. He's the guy, it's like if you're looking for, if you're going to play out the thought exercise of what the what is the hobby going to do if Connor McDavid never wins a Stanley Cup, Griffey could be the positive case to point to because he's very beloved by baseball fans still, uh, by definitely the hobby. He's a huge chase, and he doesn't seem to be, I think this is the important point, Griffey does not seem to be penalized hobby wise for not winning a world series. Would you mm -hmm. agree with that? It doesn't seem like people care. No, there's a boy. There, I'm, I'm my mind's going off in a hundred different things. There's like a special place in all our hearts for Ken Griffey. <laughs> and I'm, well, he was the coolest. He was definitely the coolest. He wore his hat backwards. To, wore his hat backwards. I'm, I mean, obviously his upper deck card. We were all kids collecting and that was iconic as rookie. I'm trying to think of, I don't know where my mind's going, but it's like, okay, let's think about this. So we're finding the corollary maybe in baseball where that's like America's pastime, right? That's what America's yeah. known for. Is there any correlation with McDavid and hockey in Canada? With maybe. Like, and a lot of bigger collector market in hockey where maybe a lot of collectors don't, I mean, maybe the hobby doesn't care because they're collecting McDavid, the player. And maybe this cup's, you know, they don't they don't care about that. They, they remember the games they've seen him play the hundred points or whatever, 150 point seasons. I don't know. I don't have a good argument. I'm, 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 it's not real form, but I'm kind of thinking of, around that a little bit. But it, I kind of look at football, too, where now we say baseball is America's pastime. Football is America's passion is like the quote they yep. use all the time now. But I'm, I'm trying to think if maybe that plays into it a little bit. Honestly, like the more I think about it, I think that for whatever reason in baseball and then maybe hockey, it's just players are just not judged as strongly or as much on winning championships as they mm -hmm. are in, in, in basketball and football. And I don't know why, like they're given more of a pass for that. And maybe the reason is that 
whether it be baseball and hockey, a player has less I'm, individual impact on the outcome. Yes, of that's where I, I was like, just going to say that. It's like baseball is that one sport where, I mean, I could be the best player in the world, but – Every game, my pitcher stinks. <laughs> we're still going to lose there, every And then game. there's the goalie in hockey, yes, right? It's like you can't yep. overcome a bad goalie, and nobody knows that like Edmonton over the last yes. couple of years. Where like in basketball, given that there's only five players on the – well, the same with hockey. It was six on the ice with hockey. But in basketball, one player can completely win a game for you. Yeah. Where maybe that's not such the case in hockey. And then just getting back to Griffey real quick – he has a huge hobby chase. He's had car 13 sales all time for more than 50,000, which is not even at McDavid level. But remember Griffey was a junk wax era guy. So you look at like yeah. the strength of his sales it, and the values for that era. They're, they're really, really impressive. And in my mind, he's the closest comparative to a championship list McDavid. You know, if that's ultimately what, what ends up happening. You know, I, okay, so, I was just thinking one, one thing when you were talking about, like hockey and how the one player and the domination that hockey to, can, it seems like it's hard for one player. Think about Gretzky. Absolute greatest player for what? 10, 12 years, 15 years. He only won four cups. <laughs> I mean, it, it seems like he probably should have won one more if, if he could control every, you but know, you hear that argument about McDavid too, though, by this yeah. time, Gretzky had won four cups. McDavid had, has zero. So how do you, like very as objectively and scientifically as possible, how do you legislate that? Yeah. Like, how do you? I, this is where we get into like eras and all that stuff. You right? know, we talk about Gretzky and Messier and Curry and Grant Fuhrer yeah. and Paul Coffey, but McDavid, you know, McDavid has Dreisaitl and he has, I guess, Nuge. I don't know. <laughs> Nuge. Nuge. He's got the Nuge. Bouchard. Okay, so so he, he, here's my takeaways. I think if you want to make an argument that an all-time great goat type NHL player can have a huge long-term hobby presence without winning championships, then you're saying that an NHL player's career should be judged more in individual contributions than team success, right? I mean, that's just logic, mm -hmm. right? More like, again, we, we just said more like baseball, like baseball than an NFL QB or an NBA player. Because our case study McDavid is so dang good, it feels again, more inconceivable to me that he won't eventually win a Stanley Cup. So this is not trying to say that I, I know we're going to get a bunch of bitter comments about mm -hmm. trashing McDavid, and we're not, right? It's just a thought exercise, right? To see no. if any, any amazing player, and he's a ridiculous player. But if it were to happen, and he continued to play this well and produce ridiculous numbers for the next 10 years, I think then we'd have an unprecedented situation. That's the other takeaway that I'm not saying that he couldn't be a hobby goat without a Stanley cup. But again, it, there's no real strong player in the past that you could point to, to say, yeah, just like so-and-so. So if you're thinking of spending and now, why is this even worth considering? Cause people spend like $200,000 on yep. McDavid cards today. And you have to wonder of those values of the premium price of a young guns are Stanley cups baked into that. What, what happens to his value? If he finishes in the top five, top three all time points and never wins a Stanley cup. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they sustain that over the long haul. Right. So, so if you were had a hundred thousand dollars that you were told to buy hockey cards with today, and part of your goal was to for them for that card or cards to appreciate over time. Would it factor into your mind in, in considering McDavid that you know if you're making a 15 year play on a card that okay if I spend fifty thousand dollars on this McDavid rookie, what happens if he doesn't win a Stanley Cup? Do I lose half my value at mm -hmm. that point, or does the hobby say no, man, this guy is ridiculous and? we need to celebrate him and chase him and appreciate him and not really blame him value wise for not winning. Where would you fall on that? Man, I think I'm you... leaning. I, I think I'm leaning towards just, he's the ridiculous player. And I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to hurt him that much if he never did win. But yeah, see, I came into this thinking you have to win Stanley Cups, and then I hit the baseball and I started thinking about all those players yeah. and think that maybe hockey 
is more similar to baseball and how players are judged championship wise than the NFL and the NBA. And I think I agree with you that if it, but it feels weird to me. It feels like, how could you be what considered the greatest player of all time and never have won a championship? Mm-hmm. But Ted Williams is considered the greatest hitter of yeah. all time, right? Yep. Tell you how many stitches he hit, saw on the baseball when I hit his bat. All right. We want to hear your guys' thoughts. I'm sure uh, that you'll give us some comments. So whether it's YouTube or message address on social media, uh, let us know what you think. We're going to move on to new product releases, Troy. National Hockey Day is coming up April 13th, your favorite holiday of the year. You got plans. You got a big party, family celebration. What's going on for National Hockey Day? Oh, you got to go, go to the LCS and get your packs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, we usually don't make a big deal out of it, but it is 2023, 24. <laughs> There's a certain rookie that everyone is very excited about. Yep. So it merits a little bit of a closer look, I think, this year. So what is National Hockey Day? What does it mean? I decided to look it up. Troy. Here's what I found out. National this Hockey from- Card Day. Card National Day. Hockey Card Day. I'm sorry. National Hockey Card Day is an annual event founded by Upper Deck. Convenient. <laughs> Canadian <laughs> Sports Cards Smart. and Entertainment <laughs> Company. It's almost like they wrote that. They did. <laughs> this event takes place on April 13th, 2024. Is a celebration of hockey and the joy of collecting hockey cards. On this day, participating retailers will offer free NHL trading cards to collectors and hockey fans worldwide. So it's basically a Hallmark holiday, of course, created by Upper Deck. But <laughs> hey, we get a free pack, so I'm yep. all for it. So if you stop by, I'm assuming it's a CDD, a certified diamond dealer, yep. you'll get a free National Hockey Card Day Upper Deck promo pack. Some you might have to spend like a minimum of $10 on Upper Deck products or something like that. Is this new? Of course not. Is it amped up a bit this year? Yes. Mm-hmm. And why, Troy? It's because, well, there's some Bedardsies and some Bedsies on the checklist. So there's 52 cards total on the National Hockey Card Day checklist and three Connor Bedard cards. So we're going to roll through them real quickly. The best was to look at, did you get the link that I sent for that? Yeah. the pictures me, were really small let me bring otherwise. It All right, here we go. <laughs> Don't mind <laughs> Upper Deck in there. Upper Deck That's... is not, it's not <laughs> They haven't not secured their site yet. Here we go. All right. I'll zoom so in. Here here's the, the the sets that well, there's two sets and then a special Bedard card. There's prominent rookies, which there's ten rookies in the set. The first one, if you're watching on YouTube, upper left corner. Yeah. The the ten rookies are Bedard, Adam Vantilli, Logan Cooley, Luke Hughes, Matthew Nyes, Devin Levi, Matthew Potois, Simon Evanson, Pavel Minchukov, and Matthew Coronado. Then there's a similarly designed a singular. It's it's a rookie moments. Connor Bedard card, which basically commemorates his first NHL goal. And then finally, I think right the here. nicest Sorry. looking one is the Victory Black rookie. There's 10 rookies there. It's a little bit different checklist. Bedard, Ridley Gregg, Logan Cooley again, Luke Evangelista, Kevin Korczynski, Anna Bantilli, Leo Carlson, Zach Benson, Brock Faber from our Minnesota Wild, and Matthew Pochois. Oh my gosh. There's also sets for superstars, legends, and then Troy's favorite mascots. No, look at this card. That is, is that awesome. Mask- is that really yeah. the Ducks mascot? Wild wing and he's in goalie gear. I love it. Oh, yeah. oh no, Nordy. That's interesting. Thanks. Now, Troy, you think these what do you think these go for? <laughs> oh geez, it's pennies. But I'm gonna say like fifty bucks. I'm gonna say like, like oh yeah, the initially- Bernard will sell. Yeah, I, yeah. I there's no like autos or anything in this, is there? Like they don't slip a couple autos in i'm also guessing that the lcs's are going to be a little more state like we'd be able to walk in and they would hand you like 20 packs before yeah. because nobody cared yep. yep i'm guessing they're going to be a little more conservative <laughs> in how they hand these out well i hope so but this is ripe for this is one of those things could be ripe for just what if what, what if the lcs just starts ripping them all i had that thought the, too it's like what if they say the like, oh we didn't get the shipment from Upper Deck, and then all of a sudden they <laughs> post them all on eBay. I hope they don't do that because I hope not either. If if you have a marketing sensibility as a local card shop, it's a awesome way to get people in your store, and that's and what kids. the kids. It's a great yeah. way to get kids. Now that was kind of the basic checklist. Will there be Easter eggs or surprises? Maybe autos that aren't in the checklist. Mm-hmm. If I had to say, 
I, if I had to bet, I would say yes. Uh, we don't have any inside info there, but no. I'm assuming there'll be some that we'll find out. Yeah, I, I'm guessing that they'll go for at least initially. People will like panic buy and spend a lot. I did. I was kind of curious. I'm like, well, what's the biggest sale of any National Hockey yeah. Card Day card? So, in December 2022, a 2010 National Hockey Card Day Sidney Crosby auto out of 87 sold for 300 us so yeah i mean you can get a pretty nice card yeah out of that but more bedsy rookies coming soon boy that one i got me thinking that might be a cheap way to get autos of good players <laughs> if you, you can find them we're gonna get to mailbag but really quickly before that troy gotta make a mention for pwcc which is a gong show partner and sponsor we're very very grateful for them to them for their support Reminder, the current PWCC Weekly Auctions Live runs through next Sunday, or this Sunday. You can log on to pwccmarketplace.com today and favorite your favorite hockey cards. You can play some bids, early bids on them too. I really like that favoriting feature. It's very nice. Mm -hmm. Ryan and I will review our favorite vintage and modern cards on this Thursday show in the current PWCC Weekly. Then Jeremy Lee and I will be live on his YouTube channel, Sports Cards Live, to cover all the key hockey cards ending in the weekly starting this upcoming Sunday night at 8.30 Central Time. Hope to see you all there and uh, be active in the chat. It's always fun. Mailbag. Another good mailbag. A big one. Uh, they're all big now. I'm limiting mailbag. I don't know what we're going to do. We keep getting... I don't like to do that. I, I get your point because you want to have a proper amount of time. No, I'm just saying that because I'm tired. <laughs> all right. Instagram, BLN Cards. I was listening to you and Jeremy talk on your latest podcast about how there are so many no-name rookies in each set and how hitting one of their autos isn't very exciting, and it got me thinking. What if there was a specific set that only came out like every three or so years, but it was a triple rookie class that only had the best of the best rookies on the checklist? I'm actually down with that. I'm sure it'd be pricey, but it would be... Uh, we open up a lot of wax here for like for our show and cause we like doing it personally. Mm -hmm. And it is kind of like, you know, when you go pack after pack and you don't know any of the rookies that sucks. Yeah. But, and I think now would be the time to do it. Cause I think there's a little more leeway. The only thing I'd be worried about is, okay, you have three years of rookies. Is now, it still a rookie? If it's is it still a rookie, no. if it's a guy from the first year of the three years, but I think we're at a point in the hobby where we kind of maybe don't look at that as much because of COVID and how that affected release schedules and stuff. So I hadn't this, thought of that. That's a good point. Yeah. But the definition of a rookie is very squishy. Yes. Yep. <laughs> okay, Facebook, Ryan D. Is Upper Deck going to overproduce Connor Bedard Young? Right? <laughs> way down over time. Well, I think they're already <laughs> produced. So yeah. however many they were going to, they do it all at once, but you, you had an answer here. What did we, what did we guess? I I think it's between a hundred and 150,000. I think, I think it was, I, I think I said 150. I think I was more towards the top. I think you were like one, I think that you're 75, but maybe was I'm I, said, I thought I was at hundred. Okay. Well, obviously you said they produced a bunch and the PSA at, 10 pop counts. We're just going to keep watching them go up and up and up. And we would think that would drive the price down and down and down. However, which it might happen to begin with. However, if Bedard runs five MVPs, <laughs> then it's going to, the price will just go right back up into crazy range. But logically we would think it would go down, right? Whereas the PSA 10 pop counts keep going to infinity. But we'll when I was talking what... about this with Jeremy Troy, I yeah. mean, and I can't almost believe, I can't believe we haven't, made this connection earlier and i'm not the biggest like stock market guy or investing guy but you have to almost look at like these very like commodity cards like young guns as a psa 10 is like a share outstanding so if mm -hmm. you buy into a company and there's a hundred shares of that company and you pay ten dollars a share right that's the market cap right that's yeah. so uh, 10 times 100 is the value of the company with this Bedard Young Guns, it's like the share, the shares outstanding are tripling every two weeks. Yeah. So the value can only go down. Yeah, it's getting diluted. Yep. Yeah, it's being totally the, the and so you may have a case, and actually, maybe we'll look into this next show. It's kind of a good idea. Where and I'll try to like mix in like investing terms here. 
<laughs> where the price of a Bedard based young guns could go down, but the market cap could go up. Yeah. Right. Because if you look at if, um, when there's a, when there's 50 young guns and they sold for 5,000 a piece, what's that a market cap of like 2.5 million, right? Something like that versus Probably. now where there's 700 and they're selling for 1500 a piece. That's 12 million market cap. So actually the total value of Bedard young guns is up based on it. And, and so long story short and horrible, like probably tying to investing aside, there's no way if the population count keeps growing at the rate it is that the values won't dramatically decrease. There's just no yeah. way there's yeah. nothing he could do. Nothing. Right. It, it's about, it's not about him. It's about pop. Yeah. Discord M Miller. 209.10. OB chasing Gretzky's goal record in Washington. We call it the great chase. Well, that's kind of good marketing. Mm-hmm. Has generated a lot of good debates about past and current stars. But would you agree it's premature to speculate about whether Matthews will break OB Gretzky record? I'd love <laughs> to see it. But in reality, <laughs> I think it'll come down to consistency and longevity. Yeah, we're just going to throw this show into total comment hell by going, uh, you know, Questioning whether McDavid can win a cup. But it's just if, funny because Matthews I'm, wins a goals record. Yeah, I'm just saying it's never, never too early to speculate. Can we just uh, turn off comments right now, Troy, and <laughs> save ourselves? <laughs> um, yeah. So Matthews' per game scoring is impressive, but a red flag for me is Ovi has missed only 35 games nope. due to injury in 19 seasons, while Matthews has missed more than 15 just eight seasons. That's a good stat. Well, it's not that he's injury that- prone. Ovi's been forged to stay healthy. The many things can happen. Blah blah blah. Well, the wild thing too is Ovi's had to suffer through what a listen. This is that, and it's just what happens. There's but been COVID, lockouts for Ovi, lockout and, two lockouts, yeah. right? Or two of yeah. one, two lockouts, maybe. Um, but yeah, again, but it's never too early to speculate. Episode 149, <laughs> Josh, you yeah. did a you answered this question, you did a complete speculation deep dive into if Matthews can possibly Paid for in the comments, but yeah, yep, ma'am, yep. we um. He has a chance, but but so much has to happen that it's, yes. it's hard to draw. So I, I do think to answer your question that it is premature, but it is something to watch and a very interesting conversation to have. Like, I, I never get how people get kind of bent out of shape about this stuff. And maybe I'm just not like emotionally tied into any of these players. So I just think they're fun and interesting conversations. All right, Discord, Philadelphia Flyagram. How can we accept PSA implementing population control and also view them as a trustworthy grading company look at the gretzky rookie and there's no other answer than there will not be another 10 unless they want there to be so jeremy and i were i think this came up on our show trey we were talking about like i asked him will there ever yeah, what be a he third say? was he like there's never gonna be another 10 yeah i, mean, I think i i think he doesn't think there will but it would be good for the hobby if hmm. there was because psa is using some sort of form of pop control there yeah this it's is a great where, question this is why we need like an objective grading co- like where yeah. computers grade i was gonna say this is where i get grumpy about grading because it's just mm-hmm. this is the stuff that drives me absolutely nuts about it and I, it's kind of why i hate it at times mm-hmm. all right instagram the sports car journey i also i also recently bought an employee exclusive purple pmg like you except mine was a swayman so i bought the capri soft Troy mm-hmm. pwcc weekly I'm curious what you guys know about employee exclusives because in my safe searches, there's a Bedard selling for quite a bit now. Can't be out that long. How does Upper Deck determine who gets these cards? I'm assuming <laughs> people who worked on the set, et cetera. And do they have to hold them for a certain period yeah. of time? If I was Upper Deck, I don't think I'd be happy seeing them fly to eBay so soon. I think we address this. This yep. is the one card they're allowed to sell. It's considered a bonus. So I, I think Upper Deck expects them to sell them. Instagram, Isles Collector. Hypothetically, if two PSA 10 OPG Gretzky's were cracked and resubmitted now, hmm. what grade do you believe they would receive? I think I know where he's going with the question. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. Yeah. I think that they would be, I think neither would be a 10 because PSA was scrutinizes these. And I'm not sure that they're comfortable with the downstream effect of 
have another 10. I, I do believe that whether it's like even intentional or inattentional, that there is some sort of population control. I could be wrong, but I just don't know how you objectively grade a card like that if you're a human being who is infallible well, is capable and incapable of being objective. Yeah. And especially, I think I'm more, the more learned too about the whole process and the dull blades, right? The dull blades. And I mean, the rough cut and all that stuff. And it's like, well, a dull blade, like it just having those frayed edges. Is that even a 10 anymore? I don't, you know, it's that it's just today's grading standards, I think would hammer those cards. California Dave, what are you, the one or two dream cards <laughs> each of you are on the hunt for in the upcoming expo? I can't wait to start talking about the expo. I'm very no, excited. No, no, no. I, I got to say this. You said California Dave, and I was hoping is you were going to put like, hey, if you have 18,000 carry on your bottle heads, what would you do with them? <laughs> <laughs> Let's say you came into a large <laughs> amount of bottle heads. A large, a large amount a of A fairly bobbleheads. well known player. <laughs> oh. How would you sell them without anybody knowing it's you? No. Yeah. So there's three cards. So he said one to two. I'm I'm gonna uh, do a little extra here. I have three. I if I can get a good price, I want the Betsy OPG Marquee Rookie 3D. That's the one Bedard rookie I really want. Yep. I want the OV Glow PC. Yep. Or McDavid. Or Crosby. And then a Kaprizov Jambalai. Yep. Those are kind of uh is there any cards in particular that you, know, you I, I'm, I'm more for players. I, I Pecorini, obviously, still yeah. looking for stuff from him. Gabrick, I'm becoming a Marion Gabrick Bobo you are. Right now. Just yeah. I'm getting the nostalgia for the wild, old wild players, and he was our first star, so I'm, I'm getting nostalgia for him. So I want to see if I can find some pretty decent cards of his. You now, need an I active just, player PC, like one that yeah. gets you excited. And I, I you tried the Andre thing. But I think yeah. you guys are falling out of love. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of falling out of love. I uh, shoot, I lost my train of thought. I was gonna... oh, there was a on eBay a Pekka Rene. It was a Panini, like a booklet that just. I think it just sold. I didn't. I didn't see it till <laughs> too late. Too late. But it was. It's only out of ten, so that'll be a hard one to find. But I can't remember the exact name of the card, but it looked pretty sweet. Your problem at the expo is you get smitten by wax, and I know, but I spent all my money on it. Troy will have a lot of wax. That's kind of <laughs> your jam. All right, we got a question from uh, Frank Porco, Porco Sports Car. Oh, what's up, Frank? McDavid versus Crosby, Civil War. Who wins? <laughs> this has been brewing. I think Jeremy kind of stoked the fleas, stoked the fires here. So I'm gonna give my answer, then you can give yours. It's probably a hedge, but McDavid is more talented in my opinion, than Crosby, but Crosby's more accomplished. So I, I guess it depends on your criteria for winning. Yeah. I mean, if I pick today, I, I go with Crosby because I'm leaning towards those cups. But You were such an anti-Crosby guy when we started the show. Too. I know. I know. I'm just... It's but again, so I'm, just, I'm bitter at him for beating the U.S. in the Olympics in overtime, but he is... He is he's just a... He's a one of the all-time great. I mean, I... Can't hate the hate, hate the player, not the game, right? All right, Instagram, Pat Bass 87 Can a player, regardless of sport, be considered a GOAT without having won oh, multiple championships? Oh, there it is. Well, I hope we covered this for you. Uh, we spent a half an hour on it. Yep. So uh, let us know what you think, Pat. would love to hear your thoughts based on our conversation earlier. Here's a great question that I love getting. It's a little bit long, so I'm going to read it fast. From YouTube, Lecker Seuss. Lecker Sue. He said, collecting question, with hindsight, or maybe a she, I don't know, shouldn't judge. If it, if, I, it, if it was your first year watching hockey and collecting hockey cards, so you have no sense of nostalgia, yeah. how would you approach your collection? What would you collect and how? A bit of context, I live in Australia and am a Maple Leaf supporter, lived in Toronto for a while. First year watching hockey and have watched every game I can and have a good sense of the league. Now I'd like to start collecting. However, I'm on the wrong side of the planet. Yeah. And there are a few card expos with little, if any, hockey cards. And LCS are short of options. I have to buy online, but I have to be very selective as shipping yep. increases. The, co- the shipping from the U.S. to Australia is insane. Oh, it's stupid. It's ridiculous. It's like you, I, you'd almost have to like pick like three times a year to buy cards and yeah. justify it that way. I'm a big advocate of collecting what you like, but I have to decide what 
that is, and would love to get the community's view on how they would approach the hobby in my place. Also, if it wasn't for the show, I would have no idea. You guys are making it so much more accessible for all of us. Well, that's really nice to hear. So that's, that's crazy. crazy. That I'll say this: in when we started the show, no, in no world would I ever expect to get an email from someone in Australia about our show and how it's helped them. So that's fantastic. Thank you for that. Puts a lot of juice in our batteries, so yeah. we really appreciate uh, the the comments. I thought a lot about this and. I wish I had like the most amazing answer, but to me, it's just, I kept coming back to like the old, like what your dad would tell you about construction, right? Measure twice, cut once. Yeah. I think if you're in your situation where there is the huge tax of shipping that you have to just be, you have to research twice by once sort of, if that makes sense. And but definitely like land on your team, right? You, you've taken the first step, right? You found yeah. your team. That's where you start, Toronto. So we're we're starting with Toronto, and then it's kind of figure out what players you like, and yeah, but the, the exact cards and the shipping is going to just be brutal to Australia. And, and hmm. buy. I think the other blanket advice we always give people is buy cards that are in your price range that you think are super cool and that you're you're going to be excited to own years from now, and don't buy based on what you perceive as the hype or or what other people are doing and that if you bet on yourself and your own taste that you'll win more often that way if your goal is to kind of you know build up any value in your collection too you know i wonder this is something to look into and i'm not just saying it because they sponsor us but like or just any vault where you have an auction or you have a you can buy cards and vault them I yes, wonder if that was, the- what's that yeah, PW. That's an awesome advice. PWC. I, I was wondering if that'd be an option. I mean, obviously you don't have the cards in hand, but you have them, and maybe somehow. But you, but you could ship them all at once, right? You could. Yeah. So you could buy cards over a three month period, and then ship yeah. yourself quarterly, and have bulk shipments. So but that's I don't know. An if, awesome idea. I don't even know if you can. I don't know what PWCC if they do Australia. I have no idea if, if that's an option or Com C or any of those kind of things. But that would be another option too. Did you see any car shops at all? And in, in, I England? looked, and they were too far away. I mean, I could have took the underground, but I knew what I was going to find was going to be. Softer. How many did you find? Like, like a couple. A a couple, and I didn't look that hard though. Like, on yeah, Google I figured Maps. that. I was just curious, yeah. like if you walked by a bunch or something. like that. Okay, Twitter X Gore Lab. He said, "No question," but I have a theory that the pink blotch on some Nathan Ooh. McKinnon Young guns. Cards is actually a ghost. <laughs> yes. But Upper Deck edited it out. What are your yes. thoughts? Well, it is kind of a question, but it's a great question. Okay, and question. You did it. I thought I heard somebody in your family say you did a ghost tour. We did. Yeah, we did. We did a around London at night. We did kind of a ghost tour. So you of... know everything about ghosts. So you're going to answer this question. You're, <laughs> you're our, our resident. What do they call ghost uh, hunters? Ghost hunters or? Yeah, so is this a, hey, I'm gonna bring it out. I'm gonna try to put, put the picture over here. It's the pink shoulder. Is this it? Oh, jeez. Why did I pick this? <sighs> Zoom. Is that yeah. it? Yeah. Maybe it is. Yeah. No, you need my wife on here. She's way better at the the ghost stuff than I am. But well, I would say the ghost of who? That's what I want to know. <laughs> so we got to hear the theories on. Do we need to get our hobby mystery crew and Scooby Doo? Uh oh, hobby mystery on the case. Yeah, it is weird. It is a weird apparition. Apparition in that photo. Unsolved hobby mystery. (laughs) There we go. I don't know. I'm now convinced it's a ghost. I I just want the story. (laughs) All right. Twitter, Sebastian Englehart. Do you think most ciders, young guns, future watch autos, and cup RPAs are buy, sell, or hold? So here's my thing on Cider. I think he's a really, really good player. Yep. He had an awesome rookie year. Yep. A tiny step back sophomore year. He's having a really good third year. When it comes to the hobby, though, we know it's super tough for defensemen, and I don't see him surpassing definitely Kale McCarr or Quinn Hughes at this point. Yeah. So he is a very, very good PC player in yep. my mind. Agree. And, and so I'm buying and holding based on pc kind of a, a thought process that yep. i don't care as much as value so i want to get a, i don't want to overpay or 
spend a ton of money and get good value. And then it doesn't mean that his market won't explode at some point, but that's more of a pleasant surprise in, I guess, the way I would go about it. Do you have a different uh, opinion? Well, I will say this. If Mo Sider wants to get into, like, boxing, did you see him whoop our boy, Philippe Forsberg? He beat this knot out of him, man. Mo was dropping bombs. It was pretty crazy. All right, Twitter X. I was gonna oh, say wait, I'm, wait. A Mo, I'm a mo like you. I, he's just he's a great D, but he's just never gonna be that 30 or as I see him today, he's never gonna be that 30, 40 goal scorer that would break out from or even I mean 25 goals. It, yeah, I just 25. don't see him on the same pot level as mm-hmm. he's young, so it could happen. All right, Twitter X Lucas Arota. My brother pulled a high end rare young guns of a profile player last year. He sent it into PSA for grading, came back with PSA 10. Well, that's awesome. Partly due to being high end, doesn't know the best way to go about selling the card. What are your suggestions? I would do. It depends what it is, and it, you know your definition of high end. If it's a yep. McDavid Young Guns high gloss, and you want to sell it, I would go to the like PWCC in the Premier Auction, something like that. If it's a two thousand a thousand dollar card, you could go to my card post and not pay any seller fees. You could do a buy now on eBay. The bit the big biggest thing is to research and, and ask yeah. opinions. So do research on 130 point. We use card ladder, market movers, take it down to your local card shop, ask them what they would do, what value would come out of it. And then it, it's gonna come down to and it always does in selling the risk reward and trade-off between auction and buy it now. If you want to maximize value, but take a little risk that you it might be wrong timing, you might for whatever reason. You might not get the two, three, four buyers that are going to go aggressively after the card. It might, you know, there's a little bit of downside risk, but you Mm -hmm. could also, the flip side of that is set a new record. Or if you just want to play it safe and do buy it now. Is there, is there a better way to answer that, Troy? A more specific way to answer that? I guess. No, I I mean, yeah, I, I, it would really help if we knew what card this was (laughs) and who the player was. That would probably give me a little more pull on where to go but yeah i think pwcc and listen again there's other auction houses out there there's golden heritage obviously we we like pwcc but any of those if it's if it's really super high end or rare i would probably go that route but again do mm-hmm. your research i don't know if it if it has previous comps you can find that would be probably one of the best ways to figure out where to go with it all right facebook ward zaharia how long before all these new collectors are new again? <laughs> but just realize the whole market is inflated and it's a house of cards and a sinking market. Uh, Ward's not real positive on the outlook of the hobby. <laughs> nah, it's, um, it's a good point. It's a good point. So I'm assuming, Ward, that you made the assumption the whole Bedarda Palooza thing is going to lead to hobby doom. And I, you might be right. I mean, it's, yeah. But here's the thing I'm just not sold on that though yet. I don't. I think we need to let this play out. I, I think that you know we're going to talk next show about March was crazy in this yeah. hobby. Crazy. It's unprecedented. Nothing ever like it. We're going to have tons of stats and figures, so stay tuned for that. But I'm just not convinced that that yet that, that it's uh, like a shut case where, where the whole thing is going to collapse. I don't know. Are you where are you at in the the short term or medium term future of the hobby? Are you worried about? Well, I'm a little. I'm a little worried, but I, I'm. I'm again. I, I keep falling back on again. I, I know what's happened with March and Medard, and it's crazy. And we've seen all these people come in that don't even know hockey at all. And but I also fall back on hockey has a lot more collectors, and I still think hockey will always kind of be in a good place. Facebook for the win sports cards. When valuing a card that hasn't sold in a while, w- would you use another card as a baseline to determine the rise or fall of a player's market since last sale? I've been using Young Gun PSA 10s since they are most liquid, but I'm wondering what's the most accurate since pop counts have a large effect on the price fluctuation. Very smart, right? That's awesome that yep. you recognize that. Example out of nine R- RPA out of 99 RPA sold for 1K two months ago, but since then the Young Gun PSA 10 has dropped 25%. Is it fair to say it's worth 750 now? Or would that depend whether it's a Pasternak Young on PSA 10 versus a Kaprizov Young on PSA 10? 100%. Yes. Right? I, I would, 
if there's not a direct comp, I think you have to triangulate. You have to look at yep. multiple kind of <laughs> triangular arbitrage point. there, foreign exchange terms. And, and so, yeah, look at the young guns, look at a similar player for the same card. And, uh, but, and then look at the, if the young guns PSA 10 has dropped 25%, has the player stunk, has the pop dramatically increased? Or, you know, and try to, you can look at like Card Ladder has like their market indexes to try to gauge the, the market, but you're right on for the win. Yeah. You're, you're doing everything right. Instagram, Burner41. Jack Eichel's cards are relatively cheap despite last year's Stanley Cup win. Which player's cards do you see increasing in value with accolades like Stanley Cup, Hart Trophies, etc.? Two players that came to my mind, Troy, are from the same team, Quinn Hughes and Elias Pettersson. I think if Quinn Hughes wins mm-hmm. some Norris Cups, or Norris Trophies, sorry, <laughs> and uh, Pettersson wins the Stanley Cup or our trophy, that those are young, very, very talented players that could see a hobby bump. Could Kucherov win the heart every year and not? <laughs> it's still no one and care. care. Yeah. <laughs> it's so crazy. Kucherov could win two Stanley Cups and ten Hart trophies <laughs> in the same year. Norris Trophy, of course, as we know, he could win a Vesna. He could be named to the <laughs> first, second, third, and fifth team All Stars, and nobody would care. This is the way it is. Any guys that come to your mind? I the first one. Uh, Quinn Hughes was the guy that popped in my head immediately. Oops, sorry. Maybe Cole Caulfield would be another one. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Zegers. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I want to talk about Zegers some more. Instagram, Matt Sotal. Knowing that print runs change from year to year, what's your best guess regarding the print runs of Young Guns Clear Cut? I've heard more than exclusives, which are out of 100, but not much more. That's a great question. Yeah. And Upper Deck I would sh- never answer it. No, nope. So I looked at just like general sales for players, clear cuts, but it's hard to know if the same card has been sold multiple times. I'm just going to give a total gut reaction. I'm going to say two to 300. I, I I don't, there's in my mind, there's no way it's less than exclusives. Yeah. I, I have no idea, but I, this, this is one of those things you wish to just, just tell us every day. Just throw us a bone on this one. Just let us know. All right, Troy, we got to take our medicine here a little bit. Well, I do. I'll, I have to take two doses. You have to take one. Yeah. So on Facebook, Dave Preston, he says, uh, how good are BU? Mm. Number one, I made the mistake of saying Maxon, or Macklin Celebrini played for Boston College. Oh, did you get him screwed up? I did. And this is a while you, ago. And he what, plays what for the BU. Eagles versus a Terrier? Is that it? Is it Boston College, the Eagles? I can't and remember. I have to admit, I was wrong. I meant to say is Celebrini wishes he would have played for Boston College. <laughs> That's throwing gas in the fire. And then, yeah, we got stomped. Yeah. We being our Golden Gophers by BU this weekend. So good luck to, yeah, it is the Terriers, right? Honestly, though, Troy, this question kind of made me realize because of this show, I think more than anything, this is the least college hockey I think I've ever watched in my life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And the thing it's the really thing that stinks is the frozen four is here. It's in St. Paul. And of course the gophers couldn't make it. Discord, Ojibwe 86. With McDavid becoming more of a two-way player, do you see him having less Art Ross trophies in his career? Edmonton's coaching staff have been emphasizing areas of his two-way play style. We've seen some amazing offensive-minded players sacrifice their goal totals. Uh, and point totals for team success, he points to Fedorov, Iserman, Crosby. Will we see this happen to Connor McDavid? I think he'll do whatever it takes to win. I do. You know, too. going back to that, I mean, he knows more than anybody that the the desire and importance to win a Stanley Cup. And at this point, he scored 150 points in a year. What does he have left to prove in that regard? Yeah, and it's pretty crazy though with this question. It's it's. Obviously, becoming a better two-way player, he's third in points still. He's got two points behind McKinnon. He's at 125, which he was – I remember the first month or so, month and a half of the year, we're like, oh, you know, is McDavid not going to be in the top three or top five? And all of a sudden, he just went bonkers. Now, obviously, lots of assists. but Yeah, we. Yeah. I, talk, I think I asked Jeremy about his – he's had like a Huberdoian decrease in goals. Right? What, he had 65 
last year and he's less than 30 this year. And should we care? Basically, you know, mm. he's had a, a ridiculous amount of assists. And so the consensus Jeremy had was no big deal that he, it, you know, you still got to, when you judge the totality of his play this year yeah. and right. Like we talked to Tage Thompson, he was like definitely hurt at the start of the season. And, you know, so I, I think that you have to maybe cut him a little slack there too. Last question. How do you say this name? Steven? I know how to say that part. Whoops. Oh, I forgot to, I didn't load it up. That's right. Oh, Steven Hansian Tanyu? Hansian Shu? Uh, let us know, Steven, how to pronounce your name. Your thoughts on the McConnor McDavid 10th anniversary? Oh, you got to load it up because there's a, a visual with this one. This card, this one. Okay, sorry, says, hold on. So there is a Connor McDavid 10th anniversary Young Guns card, and he wanted to know what our thoughts are. I think he's selling one because he had a coined maybe example of it. Okay, and here's the admit, picture. Is this okay? Yeah, yeah this the picture is fine. Sorry, have you I ever seen this, this card? Okay. No, I have not. I was like, what the heck is this? So I'm going to, I got to go through all the layers why this confused me. Oh, yeah. So his Young Guns was 2015. Yes, and you see a card like this, and it says tenth anniversary, and you're like, well, "This isn't a show, Troy." <laughs> Twenty twenty five hasn't happened yet. So how can? And then I look at the back of the card, and I don't have a picture of it, but the whole back talks about winning like the OHL MVP, and I'm like, "Well, was it the tenth anniversary of that?" And but I'm like, "That's weird." And then I did more and more research, and what I found, I finally solved the mystery, Troy. Hobby mystery solved. <laughs> oh, we gotta have a solved banner now. There you, go. there you go. This card was actually in 2018. So, well, yeah. So that's even. So it's like, wait, 10th anniversary in 2018. It's a National Hockey Day card, and it's the 10th anniversary of National Hockey Card Day. Does it say that on the back? No. Sadly, so they need to clear make that so, clear. So that, that, that's why, I'm like, I the I get the concept, but yeah, it's so misleading. It's like you have to <laughs> do like minutes of research and deciphering to figure out yeah. what the heck this card is. And I generally don't like that. It's it's a, it's just weird how they now that these go for decent money. Like, yeah, you would imagine, right? They're and again, I we weren't super active in the hobby back in 2018. So I don't know how common they were or distributed they were, but I appreciate you sending it, Stephen, because I I love how we've done 174 shows and you get sent a card like this and you're like, well, I've never seen that card before. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, Troy. Um, other than <laughs> bad teeth and... Uh, um, last, last 40 minutes, I think, I don't even remember what happened. Weird breakfast. What did you pick up? Then it I well let's see a lot of souvenirs no cards though yeah. uh did you forget to give me my souvenir I, <laughs> I you you want you can get a you can have Audrey's shirt a <laughs> Stonehenge one yeah I didn't pick up anything either it's been a crazy weekend holiday weekend a lot of family time that's our show for Monday. If you like the episode, please leave a rating and review on Apple, Spotify, whatever podcast app you listen to us on. If you love the show, you want to support us, it'd be awesome. Want to chat with us, that would be even more awesome on the Hockey Cards Gong Show Discord server. Please consider a $5 donation. Join our $1.99 support level tier on Patreon. Link is in the show description on both YouTube and podcast apps and our Instagram TikTok profile. On our website, there's a link to become a patron, hockeycardsgongshow.com. And on Patreon's website, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com. You can just search for us, Hockey Cards Gong Show. We're on social media, Troy. Don't know if you forgot that while you were gone. <laughs> or on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube. And Troy, the Hockey Cards Gong Show podcast is a production of Dollar Box Ventures, LLC. Your never-ending day is done. Enjoy your rest. And we can't wait to see you all again on Thursday and recap the most insane month ever in the hobby. <laughs>